and sisters, what more you need to see? A time feel we play, eh, 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 eh,
and but you can't ask me to come here with any solution without a book or a plan on what the solution is. My plan is my solution is the Bible, <laughs> mm-hmm. and and that began our, our union in in the faith. And I'll tell you. When you look at the scriptures, you know, all of us have these different types of stories in which we were going one way and the most high pulled us. I mean, I mean, look at Paul, mm-hmm. another Benjamite mm-hmm. from your family. He's a guy running around trying to arrest Israelites. <laughs> you understand? He's running around. He's a, he's, Christ had to come to Paul himself and say, brother, what's going on with you, man? Do you know you, you fighting against me? Mm-hmm. Blinded him for three days. Blinded him for three days and told him, you're going to meet this priest. We're going to go into Paul one of these days because I think a lot of people don't realize what he actually went through and what the Most High. The Most High showed him hell, hell fire. Christ showed him everything. Mm -hmm. So when you see all these different realms outside of your realm and know what you're fighting against, that can help you understand that there's no choice but to do the work. You understand? <laughs> All right. Now, of course, our show is not on how I met Gaja and you understand. <laughs> so today, brothers and sisters, we're going to talk about and since we have an audience, we're going to make this all inclusive with the audience as well as the phone calls. Mm-hmm. What we're going to talk about is the homosexual effect on our society. How have society changed from what we know since homosexuality has become a normality within our society? What have changed? Or what have you seen since this spirit have been allowed to operate freely? Oh, I know you got your hands up already, right? <laughs> But that, that's going to be the, the, the topic of our discussion that we're going to go into in a few moments. Have anything changed? And I'm going to be uh, open from a non-biased aspect. Have the world become a better place since it's been okay for uh, homosexuals to have the civil rights we used to have. Have it? Is, is things is things better? No. 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 Oh, so all of you have some testimony on how you feel things have changed. And uh, even though this is none of my business, you you don't have to raise your hand. Do anyone have anyone in their family, male or female, that have been struggling with that particular spirit that y'all know in y'all family? Yeah? Um, someone you grew up with or someone you're close to? Yeah. Now, I'm going to ask you all personally during this, what did you see? Was it something young? Was Did something happen to the person? So we want to go into that whole aspect of it and deal with it from a more so, not only scriptural standpoint, but from a personable standpoint on how it has impacted our society, where we live. Where we operate, right? So this is not going to be a uh, what you, what they would call a gay bash broadcast, but it's going to be an understanding of how these things came to be amongst us. What happened to where this behavior is mainstay and, and it's part of our everyday operation, our everyday goings. As citizens of this earth, I'm going to put it that way right now, right? So I'm going to we're going to talk about others who we're going to talk to others who are going to let us know how they think it has influenced society in general, and those with family how that has impacted them, and when did they see this behavior materialize in their in their homes, right? And of course, we're going to engage the audience also. And to ask them the same question. Okay? So, because when we talk about that and we come out of the Bible, there's a negative 
response we get in saying, well, it's homophobic because we don't try to get to understand what they're going through and what their struggles are. Well, you know what? Here's an opportunity. It's not to bash anyone, but let's understand what it is and how it's operating amongst our society. And, of course, we're going to show you what the Most High say about it. But all in all, I've found to some degree what's being ignored is that a lot of homosexuals, be it lesbians, what they call homosexuals, I'm going to say that because that's a politically correct term right now, whether they be lesbians or male gays or homosexuals, i found that there's a lot of victimization going on where they, a lot of them are victims. And people see the end result, but no one was there to help them at a certain part point in their life in which they were victimized. A lot of them was victimized and went through that by themselves. And that also have created an anger and anger in them to lash out against everyone because who was there? You can judge now, but who was there when the aunt or cousin, the older person, uncle or whatever, touched them the wrong way or did certain things to them when we as parents entrusted our children in the hands. I mean, we as parents entrusted our children in the hands of predators. No one have a, you know, there's no voice for them because they, they were afraid to say anything. And I find that that's one piece that's missing through all this. That people that are in sin, be it homosexual or otherwise, there's a point of entry and there's a point to some degree in which a person can become a victim that leads them down the road to sin. Right? So we're going we're gonna to deal with all every angle of this. So that if any brother or sister out there who, who's listening want to reach out and talk about their situation, then the form is open for that too. Because all sin can be forgiven. Right? So, we're going to go into that within... Let me see. We're starting off a little late, right? We're starting off a little late, so we're going to go into that in 10 minutes. Right? But before I go into that, brothers and sisters, uh... I was speaking to a brother, Yahawashai, here in England, and he was telling me about, I'm looking at his little boy right before us, and his wife, and he was telling me about the uh, healthcare system, how they were trying to do things to harm his child from birth with vaccines. I wanted to go into that first, because I, I told him to get the information together. And... He's going to tell us his story because I thought that it was not only newsworthy, but something that we can have our people, people of the Most High, be aware of concerning their science. Science is another word for sorcery. It's a different word. Okay? But all in all, they have been damaging our children, and a lot of us, a lot of us sitting here have been vaccine damaged. And it's only through the Spirit of the Most High giving us strong systems to fight against these things. But we're still dealing with a lot of these ailments. We're still dealing with lack of concentration, which is a vaccine side effect. Lack of concentration. Uh, 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 what they would call certain disorders. If you get... Uh, uh, if you get warts, if you get cold sores, if you get acne, on and on and on, on every level, all that comes from vaccines. And that's just the, the small part of things. Let's not talk about the acute muscular sclerosis, muscular dystrophy, neurological issues, okay? What they call uh, 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 um, attention deficit disorder. We can't pay attention to things. Because you're neurologically damaged. Leukemia, cancer, all these things have come, 
have been perpetuated in our society. And we were ignorant to it because no one told us in school anything about eugenics. We had no idea what eugenics was. We didn't know that Darwin and other so-called highly acclaimed theorists and scientists had a plan to kill us all. No school told me about eugenics. So the whole time they were making us believe that they were saving us from polio, mumps, measles, that that was just a front PRP for them to inject their poisons amongst us to destroy us silently so that they can pick us off one piece at a time under the guise of protecting us and then make, make us out to be some type of, uh, 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 which they would try to demonize us and make us out to be some bad parents if we decided that we're going to have our children be like the Most High had made them from the beginning. They will not be poisoned and destroyed. Right? So I'm going to turn it over to you if you get next to this, this microphone, Yahweh Shai. And let me, I'm going to ask you a few questions like an interviewer here. Okay. All right? Okay. No problem. Okay. You had your baby. What happened? Well, obviously, um, praise the Most High being established in this truth. <laughs> It, it takes a lot of people, when you're dealing with the Bible, it takes a lot of people into the medical side of things, exactly like you were saying, Elder. Go ahead. Um, the eugenics program, um, the vaccinations, the truth behind cancer. Is it, is it man-made? Is it, is it natural? What causes it? You could ask the same question about AIDS and definitely Ebola and so on and so forth. Yeah, we're going to deal with that Ebola mess too, but go ahead. Um, so looking into the vaccinations, um, and I want to put this out there, I'm not a doctor, okay, I, I, all the research, I ha all, all the information I have is sifting through research, sifting through information, um, in the false information from what you believe to be correct by finding different sources and so on and so forth, that's what research is. Now, I look mostly into the vitamin K vaccination and it's just a little bit of information I wanted to bring out. Why did I focus? Hold up. Before you get the vitamin K, because I want you to get that. Okay. I need you to give me the details, step by step, of what was told to you when you mentioned that you don't want your child vaccinated. Let's let's get the real time information so that people know what know what to look for. Okay. And then let's go into what you found. Okay, well, if, you, if you're if you in a hospital, um, I'm sure there's many listeners who have been through this process, and you state that you do not want your child vaccinated, the first thing that they do is they send is it the pediatrician. They'll say, you need to speak to the pediatrician. They refuse to log it down on their notes until you have spoke to a pediatrician. In fact, there's a sister who I know in the church who spoke to a pediatrician, yeah. had it logged down in a note, yeah. and when the baby was taken into the neonatal, um, neonatal unit... The because, nursing, whatever they nurse Yeah, it. when the baby comes early. Okay. They, without her consent, gave the vaccination. And all they did was apologize. And afterwards, highlighted it at the top of the notes. Like, put it in capital letters and highlighted it in front of her and said, look, we assure you this won't happen again. <laughs> Which brings you to my point, brings me back to the point. I looked into vitamin K. Why? Because it's the only vaccination that the child actually gets before they leave the hospital. All the other vaccinations... They can get later. They can get later on. See, but even if you try to not get other vaccinations, they'll say, well, listen... Mm -hmm. You don't have to get the rest, but can you just get this vitamin K because they need these nutrients that's in the vitamin K. The name is deceptive in itself. You did the research on the vitamin K, mm -hmm. the, the one vaccine that they insist on. Mm -hmm. what, what have you found? Well, I found out that a child doesn't reach to its full potential of vitamin K until, until at least a week. Okay, that's you mean science. naturally? Naturally. Yeah. Exactly. And that's scientifically proven. Again, you can link that in with scripture when it mm -hmm. talks about circumcision on the eighth day because yeah. for those who don't know, vitamin K is what causes the blood to actually clot. Yeah. Right? 
Now, I'm looking at some information in front of me here, um, and it's actually on the Healthy Home Economic dot com. Okay, and um, I want to read the first part. This is this is this is why. Okay, people are advised to have the vitamin K vaccination. The main reason you're here, and if you and and it's actually it's actually what one of the doctors because we spoke I spoke to a few people or one of the nurses, midwives, whoever it was. Um, actually responded when I said, well, why does my child need the vitamin K vaccination? Okay. Well, if your child's in an accident on the way home from the hospital, okay, and they bang the head, okay, it's not just about your blood clotting if you have an open wound. It's about if your child bangs the head or they have a little bump or fall, okay, if their blood doesn't clot quick enough, it can cause ble internal bleeding into the brain. Yeah. Okay. So that's the reason for the vaccine. Exactly. Now, the statistics are, and I've got it in front of me. The, 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 you, you're bringing statistics uh, on the chance of a child actually getting into an accident. Exactly. <laughs> that's key. Hit, hitting their All head. Right. One in 10,000. One in 10,000. All right. One in 10,000. Are them actually suffering any, any serious damage or anything that had linked to that in terms of records? is one in 36,500, okay? But that was separate to what I'm reading now. That's further information that I went through, all right? Yeah. It says here, in order to... Pr uh, let me start from the top. One of the very first things on a doctor or midwife's to-do list after the birth of your baby is an injection of vitamin K. The purpose of this shot is to assist the newborn with blood clotting capabilities in order to prevent the very rare and slow problem of bleeding into the brain. In the weeks after birth, risk in about one in every 10,000 live births. All right? So one in 10,000 10, chance, and, and it's key, because I'm going to bring out another statistic in a moment, right? Firstly, the first question you need to ask is, <coughs> is vitamin K, vitamin K? Is it the vitamin K that the child would produce naturally? Exactly. Is it? Absolutely not. What is it? It's called phytonidion. Phytonidion, it's a synthetic form of vitamin K. And it's also proven beyond any shadow of a doubt that anything synthetic in terms of vitamins that you take on as a fully grown adult is harmful, okay, to your body. It's proven. So what are the side effects? What is the worst that could happen for a child with that that would take the vitamin K. Okay. That would get the vitamin K vaccine. All right. Just before I just before I get I there. I want you to get there. Go ahead. Take All your right. time now. Right. The next thing is this. How much of this synthetic form do you think they should give a child? Do you think it should be Do you think it should be less than the recommended daily allowance <laughs> than an adult or the same as it? Well, it should be less, of course. It should be less, right? Yeah. They get this vaccination like Quick time. Yeah. I want to take the baby off it away and give him the vaccination. Yeah. All right. Now, believe it or not, the child is injected with over a hundred times the amount of the recommended daily allowance of an adult. Okay. That um, is sick. That is, you know what? That is that's criminal. It is criminal. And uh, okay, so. What are the side effects? How can this affect the child? Right. Let me pick it up from here, just to cover what I've said. And see, when you, I want to mention this, that you pick it up. Okay. I want to mention that you said that you wanted to make a disclaimer before you even started that you're not a doctor. Mm -hmm. Let's make this clear. Oh, I'm glad you're not a doctor because mm -hmm. if you were a doctor, you would be censored. You would be. You, you would be. Under, under, under medical codes, it would be unlawful for you to... You couldn't keep your job and say what you're saying right now. Exactly. So it's not like doctors don't know that this is happening. It's just that they are bound under the laws that be. Exactly. And I'll tell you what proves that. The MMR vaccine, okay? Go ahead. Which it has, it's been quietly passed in court about, I think it's seven or eight months ago now, that... It it is it it's been linked to autism. Yeah. It caused people have been paid 
um, people have been paid money based on the fact that their child has autism and it's been linked to the vaccinations that they've been given. Mm. Okay? Um, and a doctor who I spoke to about vitamin K, this is, this is after my child was born. Okay? This is, my cousin went through a whole, a whole heap of trouble when his daughter was born. And um, basically this doctor admitted to me live on Skype because my, my cousin refused to let anything be done. Yeah. And they actually, and it's sad because he was forced into a position where he felt he had to do it. Um, his, his woman was, uh, his wife, should I say, was, she'd outstayed a visa in the country. And she was from they, they went to the level of threatening her with immigration. We're going to get that immigration here. And deport her. separate you from, because she had a son and uh, all that. So they and can threatened. imagine that the, the oh. woman was given birth, mind you. You can imagine. Can you imagine being threatened by the authorities in the hospital that they're going to call the authorities to deport you and separate you from your children and your family? If you, why would they go through so much to give you something that's good for you? Exactly. If it's good for you, then why don't you? If it's if, hey, that'll be your risk then. So 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 I need you to give me the side effects of this vitamin K because I want to get right into it so we can jump okay, on the next cool. thing soon. All right. It says here, okay. Okay. I'm gonna go straight to because here you, we go. Go ahead. What you got? How much synthetic vitamin K is in the shot? Shockingly, the national standard. Can, I need you to give the reference site to what you're reading. Okay. The site again is www the healthy home. Econ economist.com Home Economics The Healthy Home Economics dot com Go ahead mm -hmm. Alright, okay it says how much synthetic vitamin K is in the shot Shockingly the national standard m Mandated by most states For US hospitals to administer Is over 100 times The infant's recommended daily allowance Of the nutrient Since studies have linked large doses of vitamin K with childhood cancers and leukemia. Childhood cancers and leukemia. Now yes. check that out. Mm -hmm. So they're giving the children cancer and leukemia and then rolling the children out after being vaccine damaged, suffering from cancer, as a ploy to get finances to so-called cure cancer. So all your money going to these foundations it's not for these children that, to be cured from cancer. It's to go into more research on how they can kill more children. Leukemia and Children don't get leukemia and cancer. How long have we been hearing, let's search for a cure for cancer? Now it doesn't even affect the demographic of people it used to affect at 60 and 70 years old and 50 years old when their immune system are breaking down. It's affecting children. So what happened to all the money for cancer research that's been given for over two decades now? Are they, is this fun towards curing cancer or creating more ways of giving cancer? It seems like the latter, right? Exactly. Yeah. All right. Quickly. And, and then I'm going to hand it straight back to you. Again, it's not vitamin K. It's not a natural source. It's phytonidion. So they line. They're, they're, they're high in the poison by that, calling it vitamin. And, and let me tell you, these pediatricians... When they said, well, why don't you want the vitamin K vaccination? I said, because it's not vitamin K. <laughs> <laughs> I, and, 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 and I promise you, I wish I... I could you should have recorded now. it. And she was, but um, it's, what, what do you believe it to be? I said, okay, well, instead of me assuming, why don't you tell me exactly what's in the vaccination? They cannot answer. It's what it is. It's not natural vitamin K, but it's... And I said, okay, so what's in it? If it's not natural vitamin K, what... What is it? Yeah, what? tell me. What? It's man-made vitamin K then, right? And, I, and I'm trying to find common ground, and she's like, well, yeah, 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 that's, that's right. I said, okay, well, what was it made from? You with me? And, <laughs> and I did it to like two of them, I think it was, because they tried to get us at two separate points. You with me? And praise the most high that I came into this information because I had this 
Mm. And this references different information which I'm quickly going to give the listeners. <laughs> now, first of all, this is what's in phytonidion, okay? Phenol, <laughs> carbolic acid, a poisonous substance derived from coal tar. Mm. That sound good or bad? Oh. oh wow. All right, it's got benzyl alcohol. That's just a preservative. But does it sound good or bad? Propylene glycol, better known as antifreeze and a hydraulic they put in great Antifreeze in vaccines. Mm hmm. Well, the, well, they, put, uh, they could put antifreeze, but what they do is they come out with these different names that I'm struggling to pronounce. So you have absolutely no idea that is what it is or what they use this normally in the modern world, you would admit. It's in your brake fluid. It's in your antifreeze. Absolutely criminal. Listen, it's, it's, it's the most I that, that when you inject the baby with the baby don't kill over and die right there. <laughs> but a lot of them do, though. And then they'll, they'll blame that on, yeah, exactly, sudden death or, or I'm going to tell you, a lot of children are dying from the vaccines because it's time released. So by the time they get the child home, it's dying. And then, they, then they're charging the parents with batteries, saying, claiming that the parents shook the baby. A lot of children are dying every day that we'll never hear about, especially in the hood, where it's commonplace. What you 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 have something on that, sister? I was going to say, um, my grandson was recently in hospital with septicemia and both types of meningitis, um, and I found out a week before we had the BCG vaccination. He he was he was diagnosed with what? Meningitis. Meningitis. And septicemia. And, and that's bacteria and, and viral meningitis. And, and viral, and you found out. That the week before that they had what vaccine? The BCG, I'm not sure the, what. Some BCG vaccine. So they 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 damaged yeah. that child. And because he was a vaccinator and he's, he's one now. He's one. I spoke to his mum and I told her about the vaccinations and I gave her some information. She didn't vaccinate, vaccinate him at first, but then later on she decided to they gave him like higher doses. She did it anyway after you warned her not to. But do she, did she realize it now, don't she? Well, I told her if it was and see, that's what they bank on. I'm going to tell you, because it started off with the education first. It started off, first of all, separating and destroying the family fiber was their first key because that was the first line of defense for us is our family. So they had to break down the family first. And then they had to lower the education. And then made it where we don't trust each other, but we trust government for everything. See, these were stages. They they couldn't do this overnight. She has me and one of saying to vaccinate. And then, it, and then all the people in her family. And her mom on the other side telling us to vaccinate. Exactly. See, her mother is not aware of the Margaret Sanger eugenics apparatus and program to kill us all. Her mother don't know that she, her, she's in the crosshairs too. So they made her mother believe that to be a a, 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 a good parent, to be a parent, a, a respected parent, that you must follow these protocols. So that, that's the battle. That's the battle. But my answer to mothers all over the earth is, how was children living? How were strong people living? Tens of decades. Before there was any such thing, don't forget vaccines is a new science. Yeah. How was people living for hundreds of years before there was any such thing as vaccines? But go ahead, let's wrap this up because I want to get to the next part of this in a moment. Okay, well, the last little bit of go ahead. information I want to give out there. Okay, the statistic. Okay, yeah. just to refresh everybody's memory, one in 10,000 chance that your child will be involved in an accident anyway. Because bearing in mind, this is the thing about the vaccination that people forget. Yeah. Really, you only need this vaccination to cover you for a period of a week. Because after a week, there's no need for the child to, to, to have vitamin K. Mm. There's a natural build-up. Hence the reason, even the scripture tells you, to circumcise your child on the eighth, eighth day. day. 
And it says circumcised on the eighth day because that is when the blood is that's when the blood is able in, to heal the circumcision. In fact, there's information. Oh, that's crazy. There's information that says that there's more than a hundred percent within the second week, mm. and it falls back down to the. It, there's actually an overload of it, so to speak. Yeah. Naturally, your body produces more than it needs, and then it and then the level drops. Mm, that is. Incredible. Right, so, so they, they're getting away with convincing the masses to say, you need this vaccination, but really, it's only going to cover your child for a week. You could wait a week, and yeah. your child won't need it, okay? But if you go home, okay, and so, and you crash your car, if someone bumps into the back of, of your vehicle... Then, then they're going to charge you the same, and make you liable. Exactly, and not, not only that, but the same, it's the same tool that they use over and over again. Fear. Yes. Without without that, people wouldn't fall into these traps. They're scared. And you know what's crazy? And I'll put this out there live on air. As strong as I was, the amount of pressure that I was under, and what they say, it must be, it's like they've got a degree in, in, in psychology. psychology. And, and I'm like thinking, but yeah, for a second, I was second guessing my research because they were. Telling me, well, who's okay? Who wrote that? And it's and this happened over a period of like two or three days because I went into the hospital and stated from the beginning, don't come at, based on the fact that a sister who I know stated she didn't want their child to have the vitamin K vaccine, and they did it behind her back. So I said, listen, I want it on the top of the notes, highlighted. Do you remember I said they came back in? Yeah. And after it was done, I said I want it highlighted from now. So I was making a fuss from the very beginning. You with me? So they were saying things, and it was causing me to and, and reassess. And just I didn't. Well, just something just come to my mind just now. What you're saying when you say um, that well, you know you're in the hospital and your child is there, right? The Messiah said that we want to them that get suck in those days, and that's an instrument that they'll use against us with our children. Mm -hmm. It's like if they, you know, if, if if I hear that my child is at school and they're taking them somewhere, you understand me? Who will stop me from going there? You understand? So if you're in a position right now and they know that, they know that, listen, you're emotional, new child is here, you just, want get, you just want to get out. You understand me? You don't want to hear social services coming to take away your child. You understand? I have, I have, I have, I have encountered that, where the, trend, the first thing to start saying is, that, okay, well, if you don't do this, you're going to get social service in um, child neglect and all of that stuff. And it's like you, 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 you find yourself into a, into a pressure point or that way, okay, what do I do? You understand me? Because I get, I get the vaccine for them or social service come and take them, then I'm dealing with something else again, you understand? And this is this is the thing that, that they pray on. They pray on the fact that, you know, all that emotion is going on with you right now. And they attack you with it. And 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 I think that, that we should do as a nation of people coming and building is we should get back into midwifery, knowing how to deliver children in, in, in house. Unless you have a, a, a serious ailment, right, that you would probably need special attention outside. You know, there's nothing wrong with having a baby upstairs. You understand? But that's how we used to do it back in the old days. Anyways, you know, my mother was born in a, in a house. You understand? It's not even like it's, it's not even like it's not even like it's so it's a hundred years ago. You know, my mother, you know, you know, is twenty years older than me. So we have to, we have to get back into. Into doing, into doing these things, into learning midwifery, um, do a bit, you know, getting yeah. these people trained up amongst us, so that when we have our children, our children them can, you know, we can, we can do home, home delivery. You're not worried about you have to leave the hospital and you can't leave. You can't leave if your child don't get this vitamin K or get this vaccine. You understand me? I mean, it, you know, yeah, it's crazy. So these are things that we have to, you know, get back into, man. Yeah, and 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 and. and like Isaiah said, woe unto them with child. You understand me? This is gonna be a, this is gonna be something that they will use against us. They want to make it a law soon that you have to have all this. <coughs> they take the child up here and then you put them in. Well, they're gonna try to put everybody in prison. <laughs> See, I mean, the, the whole plan is to is, is to just lock everybody off. You know what I mean? And, I, and, and, and it's deep because even coming back here, and I'm checking out some of these streets. I'm checking out. I'm, I'm I'm looking at how you drive through, and these are car sacks in every area. They only got to cut off two streets to take this whole area mm -hmm. and make it into a camp. So, 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 what I'm saying, people in England, 
really don't got to worry about being moved into concentration camps. Sir, they, they, they done set up a system here where they can block off two streets and this whole thing can be controlled. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying, what, 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 just saying, so they're going to threaten that. That's their end game anyway. They got a large percentage of our population locked up already. They just trying to get the rest of us in. So we know their end game. But in the meantime, while we have some freedom, I would rather pay a sister a thousand pounds or American or whatever to watch over me and watch over the woman and make sure she can bring the child mm -hmm. healthy than trust the government. If I break that down for, you know, that's a little over 100 bucks a month, 110 bucks a month, so if she can check and make sure everything is going, at the end of that nine months, she on that call, she's the sister that go all through the United States or all through England. She deliver every baby here. She's a midwife of here. She's a midwife of here. Mm -hmm. And know what the law is. You understand? And know how to operate. Along with her, have a brother who deal in law like we have Mark, who can work together with because there is people being born with children every day in their own home like the Amish in America, mm -hmm. and the government have no power over their children. And they're the healthiest people in America right now, the Amish American, look Americans, look them up. They they deliver their own children, they nurse their own children, they take care of their own children. They're the healthiest people in America called the Amish Americans. Mm -hmm. So why can't we have it? This this is not it's not hard to figure out. It's that it's that psychological programming they've put on us. That's a job for a sister now because you know how many babies we have? If she getting a thousand here and a thousand here and a thousand there she don't got to worry about council housing or this, that, and the other. She's she's a support system to bring forth the nation. Mm -hmm. what, a, what, what a great and powerful position to have in this earth. But go ahead. You can finish up because we need to get to the next phase now. Thank you, sir. All right. And, yeah, based on the back of what you're saying quickly, we, we fall right into that trap when we register our children. Registering legalese means giving up ownership of. Mm -hmm. Hence the reason if, if, if a man and wife go the separate ways, who do you go before? The judge. To mm -hmm. discuss who, who this child is going to live with because that's not your property anymore. You gave that child up to the government, so they're going to decide where their property is going to be at. Exactly. You with me? Exactly. Okay. Um, so that's why the Bible says, Hosea 4 and 6, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. It's the lack of knowledge. They plan on our ignorance. Mm -hmm. If we know, then we, then we can come up with ways to, you know, to protect ourselves. Exactly. That's it. It's not about attacking or hurting other people. It's about being able to protect ourselves. Right? All right. All right. Um, Come on, let's wrap that up so we can go to the next phase of so, it. So, again, um, last piece of information I'm going to give out, okay? Yes. The statistic is one in 10,000 chance that there'll be an accident, okay? Firstly, now, again, one in 36,000 that your child will sustain injuries if there is an accident. And even that one in 36,000, all right, this is based on how many babies are born and make the journey. Hold on, right? Yeah. Based on that one in 36,000, even they can attain treatment. That that doesn't mean they're necessarily they've necessarily lost their lives. Yeah. But let's just stick with one in ten thousand. We won't even go there, right? It, if you go to the midwifery digest, okay? Yeah. Volume two, section three. The midwifery digest. Yeah. Go ahead. Volume two, section three. Okay. Published yeah. in September nineteen ninety two. Okay. So from when this first came about, people knew that this was estimated that the chance of your child developing leukemia from the vitamin K shot is about 1 in 500. 1 in 500 chance of your child developing leukemia, cancer. <clears throat> in opposed to 1 in 10,000 of your child even being involved in any form of collision on the way home. So there's a greater chance that your child will have cancer and you'd have to deal with all the yeah. ills of that than the one in 10,000 chance they're threatening you with. Okay, <laughs> now, check that out. 
and, and I just want to repeat that again for the listeners. It's Midwifery Digest, Volume 2, Section 3. Yeah, published in September 1992. And the doctor was aware of this. Cause I, I, when, again, when my, when, my, um, when my cousin went through this in the hospital, yes. um, I spoke to the doctor. He was aware of this. And he even said, I understand with many vaccines like the MMR, even I wouldn't give that to my child. <laughs> and, and I said... Oh, you should have recorded that. I said... <laughs> Listen, I said, so, okay, so, what if this gets quietly passed in court that vitamin K causes cancer, then? What if you see a medical report written by doctors who you do esteem, uh, you know, or hold in high regard? You're going to take the word for it, right? You're going to yeah. read their research, read one other person's research who you hold in a high place, and you're going to prophesy based on what you know. Mm. You with me? That's what he's going to do. It's a doctrine. It's like religion. They can't come out of what they've been told. They've been programmed. I don't even blame them for how they think. I just look at I people. blame them. <laughs> because, because you have, you have to realize they know that this is their livelihood. All the prescriptions they're writing and treating people with all over the earth is based on the side effects of vaccines. No vaccines, there's no need for doctors. But this is the thing. So, so, so they're, out of, they're out of work. Exactly. So, 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 so it's, you know, it's, they're tied to, to the system, and and you know what? If you, if a child does die, they are com they completely thrown out. They are thrown out. It's it's almost like they're in fear of losing their career if they don't vaccinate that child. They're being pressured. It's like yeah. the police. If they don't pull so many people in a day or give out so yeah. so so many tickets, yeah, it's like they're, they're working on commission also. Yeah, and also there's a certain when it comes to. Uh, uh, state funding for these separate hospitals to get wings and all that, mm. that's all contingent on how many people that they are vaccinating. Mm -hmm. So they can't get a lot of this funded, even in schools. That's why they'd rather take, you, take your child and homeschool your child than have your child amongst them not vaccinated because they don't get state funded for any child in the states that's mm. not up on their vaccine. They don't get the money for it. So each child... People don't know this. Your schools are really a private entity. Your school, even though it's government, it's a private entity that gets state funds based on them complying with the health regulations. You understand? So they get paid for each child in school. So if your child is not being vaccinated, then they are losing. And then the principal, the nurse, the doctor, the psychologist, all of them are together threatened. Not because your child didn't get vaccinated, because they got a lot of people they're making money off of. And if, you, you, if you're a parent that has a big mouth and want to speak about this, you can affect all the children in their schools. So they want you out. They'll move you out of the way and get you homeschooled and everything before you break the code. I'm going to tell you, it's systematic death. And someone just said, uh, we, we, we're live on... Um, you, we're live on Ustream through Gathering of Christ. Someone says, man, I thank the Most High I'm linking in today because my wife is currently six months pregnant. Praise the Most High. And can, can now, I, see, we got to thank the Most High for that because I tell you this. You see that? You see what the truth can do, though? We, This truth, just going out and speaking about it, probably saved the child. Mm -hmm. And can I just say this, and, yes. and, and, I, and I was going to finish on this note, anyway, I advise everybody, okay, who's planning to avoid their child receiving the vitamin K vaccine, okay, not to tell them, not to tell the doctor straight away the way I did, okay, because I believe the fact that my cousin stated it from the beginning, yeah. these people premeditated how that child was going to receive the vaccine, mm -hmm. so when he took blood from... from from his daughter, yes, to, to make sure there's enough oxygen in which I never knew about. It, it is a fantasy, but it's all the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they can claim that something is wrong, and exactly. And that's exactly what they did. They said, Oh, when we, it's just a natural procedure, we have to make sure there's enough oxygen. And we realized that the blood took over 12 seconds to clot, which is very strange. And now they made it. This is this is they use they use this because here's the thing: you have the right to decline the vaccine. Like I did praise them all time with no interference, right? Yeah. But but if they find a reason why yeah. they, why they can accuse you for them to find a cause, 
okay, we have we have great reason of concern based on the fact this child's blood is not clotted. The blood, it's not clotted. This is serious. But that's, that's what they have in place. Exactly. For the people to say, well, this is not clotted. This is not clotted. Exactly. They have in place for people like you. For people like us, that brings the awareness. Why? Because now they just need a way in. Exactly. So now they have they have what you would call evidence mm -hmm. against you now. Exactly. So no, you can't. No, I don't want you to take blood. No. Exactly. No, no. Back up. And, and, and see, there's another thing you can say. Listen, I'll tell you what. So so you're saying the vaccines is the way or whatever the case is. I know we're going to get to the next point in a second. Back, listen. So are you willing to put your career and yourself on the line if my child is not if my, if my child is affected by this vaccine, are you willing to put your job and your livelihood and the future of your livelihood on the line? Mm -hmm. See, and these are the questions we need to be asking them because why they come from a position of authority and use that like bullies. Mm -hmm. So they got to know who they're speaking to. So you don't have to be a bully, but you can let them know. Listen, you just tell me how far you willing to go with this. And put up a contract. Listen, listen. I need to know how. Are you willing to stake your your career and and and, and your and, and your life of, of your family on whether or, because if something happened with this child, I'm not dealing with the system. I'm I'm dealing with you. I'm I'm, I'm talking to you. Mm -hmm. So what I need in here, I need the name of everybody up here on this floor because. That child has entrusted me to protect him because there's nobody else can. That that child is helpless. That child is is is, is entrusted me to protect him. So, if you will just do that, that's fine. I need the names of everybody on this floor, starting with the doctor. See, and now that puts you in a position of authority. Do they really want to deal with you mm -hmm. when when they got about a hundred thousand people that they can just deal with over and over and just take it? They'd rather just let you go away. What, what they don't tell you is that you can get it naturally. Yeah. Like, I, I think it's now antenatal classes before yeah. my baby was due. Yeah. And even the midwife there said, um, when your baby's born and uh, say the first time they test Jesus, it has enough vitamin K in there to sustain them anyway because they absorb it through their skin. Yeah, and also through the mother's breast milk as well. Yeah, they're getting the vitamins through that. Yeah, so you don't even need a vaccination. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, listen, we all know. Yeah, my, my whole thing. Now that we are aware, you understand? Was Christ vaccinated? <laughs> uh, so, so come on with this, with, with this, with this hot mess, y'all bring it here. <laughs> all right, listen. No, I want to do what people have been doing for thousands of years, and and that's what's going to happen here. Okay, you can call whoever you want to call. All right, and and and, and we have to we, we we have to stop operating from a defeatist standpoint. You have to realize we're not the minority here. You understand? Then you, you 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 those we are the majority. Yes, sir. Yeah, just to add to what the brother just said. Yeah, um, if, if you notice as well, all the encourage. Um, and you work in the you work you work in the healthcare system. Yeah. Okay. All, all the encourage um, newborn and um, when mom as well. So the, you don't really need to feed the baby with the breast. You know, we, we can the, the provide breast. Um, what they call it, milk. Oh, yeah. Poison. For newborn, you know, because. As the man said, you, you, you've got you've got natural stuff that you can get from the breast milk, you know, but they they they, they don't encourage that. Sure, thank you, sister. Yeah, yeah, they don't encourage it, breast listen, milk. everybody know there's nothing like mama's milk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mama been whipping that thing up for nine months just just for you. Everybody know there ain't nothing like mama's milk. You get that baby at mama's milk, they believe, you would think that. Somebody laid hands on this child. This child running through walls in three months. We all know there ain't nothing like mama's milk. They're going to try to give you this synthetic mess. Karima, please remind us what they did, and I, and I wouldn't even bring you in. They tried to trick us with the notes in the hospital, and I want to put this out there. Just, so they try to trick her. Well, what did they say? Um, are you talking about when they said they need to dance for That's 
was it you? Yeah, when, when they said he needed to go into the neonatal unit because um, they said whilst I was giving birth, or just before I was giving birth, he was in the water for more than 12, 24 hours. More than 24 hours, yeah. that's it. And how long was he in for? Four. Four hours. And they said that it had been over 24 hours. Based on that, we need to take him over here and give him antibiotics. So you really... And if we him... wouldn't have read the notes... Yeah, you read the notes. They'd have whisked him away. We, wouldn't, we didn't even know what was going on. Look at that. So you're really going into the hands of the enemy that's looking to, to destroy your child. Mm -hmm. When you... And, 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 oh, my goodness. And, and see, it's all a mirage. It's all... It's, it's sorcery. Because why? You will have little teddy bears floating and the little things floating over the nursery and the little pink blankets and someone there with a camera to take it. It, it looks like everyone cares for you in this place. Boy, mm -hmm. I'm so glad we have had this discussion, brother. Thank you for this story. I did, but it ain't over yet because we're going into the next phase. So I'll tell you what, let's play one song and come right back with the homosexual agenda. Okay. And its imposition on our society and how were we introduced to the rainbow. Be right back. Um, we'll be right back after the turn. Everybody, you're listening to the Search Engine International live broadcast in Manchester with a live audience. One in a lifetime broadcast. Hello, Rakai. Praise the most I hear. Okay, okay. okay <laughs> all together, real quick. Let's not wake up the neighborhood, though. Let's give them one more Kwam Yashala. Come on. Kwam Come on. Come on. Therefore, gravity, the baby can't move forward right. because they got your legs up and the baby is still going downward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So really, they want it that way to keep you there longer. Mm -hmm. Every woman, the midwife used to have a stool and the woman would stand up and now all the power that you can use going downward and gravity pulling would make the birth like that. Even though you went through the pain of it, mm -hmm. it didn't take that long. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, But... It, but they came up with new ways to keep women in the hospital longer to do what they need to do to them. So they say, lay them on their back. You're not supposed to have a baby on your back. You're supposed to, you're supposed to have all the force going downward. The baby's coming down. And, 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 and as it opens, as, as you deal with the opening, the baby comes down even harder. That's why the midwife would hold it and come down like that. And then they would cut the cord right there. It, it, it was a stool that they would stand under the woman. And the woman used to, the bed was there, but she would be like this, using gravity. A brother came to the class, right? Yeah. A, a brother came to the class. And I can't even remember who it was. I know it was a brother. They might even be here. Who actually gave the date that it was changed. Like every, every woman gave birth standing up until a particular period. Yeah. Like it, it was Reuben. Yeah, it was Reuben, and he's not here today. Yeah, and he gave he came out with all that information yep. when they changed it and started yep. telling women they had to lay down. Yep, and so on. Anybody, and so on. why do you think they tell you every couple of minutes? Why don't you go stand up and walk? Why don't you walk around the room for a minute? They know it's gravity. They know it's gravity. And then, and then all that pain and strain is on the woman's back. So they're really making the pain worse than it should be. Women have enough pain as it is. But then all that baby's on your back. They're doing this on purpose. All right, so we're out of that. We're out of that. But there's enough, enough information on that. Now going into the next phase real quick because we don't have a lot of time. Okay. We, so we're going to... The, the question is dealing with the homosexual uprising in our society. Now... What we relate this to, to some degree, when we read of Sodom and Gomorrah, how the system and society went to the, went to the degree in, in which the Most High had to send a destruction because there was immorality, a lack of family, a lack of love. Now, but we're seeing this firsthand materialize as the homosexual agenda rises. So we're able to see what's going on in our system to compare to what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah to know how it came to what it is. So I'm going to ask you, I'm going to start with uh, anyone. You can volunteer. We're going to start here and we're going to open up the phones in one moment. Let me ask you just questions straight out. This is a discussion. I'm here with you, your family. 
Let me just ask you, um, what has changed for the good or the worse since this homosexual civil rights have been uh, pushed on the scene? I'll go on. Go ahead. Fashion. Fashion? Fashion has changed. Fashion has changed. Yeah, How has fashion changed? To the point where even people who are straight are wearing what you'd consider homosexual garments. And um, what I mean, all right, give me tight a, jeans. Uh, no, you're talking about men wearing. Yeah, yeah the feminized, yeah, the feministic. These, these men, uh, the, even though they might not be practicing sodomy, they're looking like they're practicing sodomy. It's like their fashion is. It is that many homosexuals, especially here in Manchester. Yeah. This is where they all come from. The UK. So the fashion have changed since the homosexual agenda. Yeah, the fashion exponentially. Uh, is that from just the man's side or the woman's side? Uh, no. Both? Okay, what you got, sister? Go ahead. No, because they're not so uh, between me. That's what I find it difficult to find my woman pair of pants. Uh, yeah. Back yeah. Yeah. Tight. You find it hard I'm to find. Kind of so kind of kind of so kind of I even got tight pants for little boys. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, fashion. What else have changed for the good or the worse? Men are more fitting to women in fact that physically wise, you know, you are getting groups and you know, and like just sort of just morphing into women and what their physical their emotional state as well, like very emotional men crying all the so time. So men are becoming more and more emotional. Yeah, more emotional and you know, kind of more abstract as opposed to men. And they're taking certain hormones yeah. and all that to grow breath. So so the physical appearance of men are morphing into women. Yeah. And on the reverse side of that, it, that's happening too with the women. Yeah. So you're seeing women with mustaches and beards and wearing fashion of man right now where you have to take a second look now to know if someone's man or woman. Yeah. So this unisex thing or this hermaphrodite yeah. spirit, yeah. Mm -hmm. it have, have become pertinent. It's not like they are freaks anymore as we once looked at it like some freak scenario. To see these things would be normal now. Because even, even nowadays, you notice, if you look very closely in some men, they wear makeup now. Proper makeup. Men are wearing proper makeup now. Are you kidding me? No. Yeah, no, yeah. no so y'all see men in England as, running around with makeup on. As, as, as I'm thinking about fashion, the women have handbags now. They have men and handbags. Yeah, man bags, and they have tight. They call them man bags. Short shorts, yeah. Yeah. Short, short, short shorts for men <laughs> now. As well. Okay, okay. So, so now, now that now that we've dealt with the fashion side and the outward appearance side, what about the moral side, spiritually? Yeah. Have y'all examined that? Okay, they can be married now. So what effect, because they say, well, listen, they're not harming anyone. This is their choice. We're not harming anyone. Is it affecting anyone? Can we, can we say that, okay, they're doing this and that's their business and it had no effect mm -hmm. on me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. If not, what effect have it had on us then? Come on. I, I, I used to work with somebody who was homosexual and just constantly making references lifestyle. It's quite frustrating because then I can't outright say to him even though I did. Sure. Be quiet, I don't want to hear about that. I'm not I'm that's not exclusive, I'm not down with stuff like that. They they will then go and speak to a manager and then you're in trouble for being there. Oh so here we go. So now they're operating in our jobs and finding reasons to affect our livelihood. So they get in positions, and if we don't agree with them, they'll claim that you're homophobic and look to get you fired. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, go deeper, go deeper. Oh, see, oh, oh, okay, so here it is, though, because we, we need to, hold up, let's deal with this for a second. Because if they get in a place of authority and then bring a conversation that leads, initiate a conversation of homosexuality, that means they're asking to be in a position to get you fired. Why even talk about homosexual things with you? Like a constant approving, a constant want approval of their lifestyle and what I see. Doing. So now they are not just operating for their own lifestyle. Mm -hmm. They're now their lifestyle is being imposed on you, and if you don't accept it, 
you can lose your job. See, now we're getting into places they don't talk about. They don't, because they claim this is just how they want to live, and they're being bullied, and no one, you understand that they're the victim, and that their life don't affect us at all. But here's a woman who's saying her job was threatened because someone initiated a homosexual conversation that she was, she didn't want to be involved in. <laughs> I should have the right not to hear about your about even a man or woman. I shouldn't be hearing about your sex life, man or woman, even if you're straight, on a job. Mm -hmm. So why would you be talking about your boyfriend and all that around me? Mm -hmm. You know what? You know what? He probably knew you didn't agree with it and initiated the conversation so that he could now go and backbite you and get you fired. And you know what? I'm hearing a lot of a lot of this. Mm -hmm. Where homosexuals, lesbians and Gay men are getting in positions of authority. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah, and, it and using their position, abusing their position, yeah. and threatening people who are straight. Yeah, check this out, man. Right? What you got? About a couple of years ago. What you got, babe? Shouldn't no. that be up? No, no, no. That's good. Yeah, okay, you, go ahead. You, 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 once you open. Is that mine? No, no, no. That's mine. Okay, go ahead. Yours are open, right? That's it. No, I ain't open. Yeah, no. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Open it again so I can see it. No, no, no. <laughs> go, go on your screen. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm, okay, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm listening. Go ahead. <laughs> right now, about about two years ago, two and a half years ago, um, I, 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 I my sister, my sister was dealing with some problems, and um, she was in the hospital at a psych, in a psych ward. Yeah. And um, they want, they wanted, they wanted, they wanted to, they wanted to, to what, 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 what they call it, section. You understand me? Claim that she was a harm to herself. And, and and family or whatever, and she needed she needed like you know like because I, I was like her guardian so to speak. Yeah, I was there like speaking on her behalf. And what they did, what they did, they sent in right, they sent in three other other most I don't know how to put it most effeminate men. You understand me? One of the Israelites, uh, one and one you know. One black guy, one black one guy, white guy, one white guy, and this other one. I don't know what it was. You understand me? And they came in, and and I realized then that it wasn't it wasn't no longer just about my sister. It was about me as well, because they were looking to provoke me into into doing something, saying something, acting out a turn, or acting away, and then it, it turned out that that you know. Kept my cool, you know, made it pass. And the next, the next doctor's visit that we had, it was noted on her on her record that her brother is aggressive. And I'm like, oh, so since it was a noted on the record that you are aggressive, they wanted to pull that out of you by bringing homosexuals in, not just any homosexuals, feminine outright. Yeah. Flaming yeah. homosexuals, right? Yeah. Now, 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 uh, l l let's deal with this for a second now. Let's deal with this. Because should we have the right, should we have the right, be it a doctor, school teacher, be it someone in position, or whatever, should we have, have the right if we see that someone is exhibiting that particular behavior? Should, should we have the right to say, I respectfully decline their assistance because I don't agree with their behavior? Yeah. We should, should we have the right to do that? We should have. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if we're out there and if someone is out there being disruptive, um, you know, being, threat, being threatening, we, we, you know, we can say these things. So why? We, we, have, we have the right to, 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 to say, well, okay, listen, you know. Based, even, no. even, even based on... Just say, quote unquote, being protected under religious, religious belief. Yes. Even though you're that way, religiously, this is against my religion for this, for you to operate in my zone. Mm -hmm. You understand? I don't, I don't agree with the behavior, so I don't need you to operate. Now, this is another thing I wanted to go into. I need someone want to give me some other examples of how homosexuality have affected because I'm going here because I have had some conversations in the past 
right? In private, so I'm going to keep it anonymous, to, anonymous without putting out any names or whatever the case is. But I've had people give personal, you know, anonymous email and all that and say, well, listen, a lot of this is going on because we have been taken, I, I was, one guy said that he was taken advantage of. Yeah. by someone he trusted, and from that, he gained a, a, an early attraction towards the same sex because that's the first time he experienced any type of what they would call sexual sensation. And because that was the only sensation he knew, it moved him towards that behavior. Mm -hmm. Because someone he trusted introduce things to him. And women have said the same thing. Somebody they trusted introduced it to them and they found enjoyment in it. So they didn't see no need to want to deal with someone of the opposite sex because they already were getting enjoyment with the same sex based on them being violated by someone older. Or You understand? So they didn't have no power. They were kids. Five, six, Seven years old. Mm. So, I'm going to put this out there. And I'm, tell me, is this homophobic? The Bible says that. Let's get into Leviticus real quick. If a man lied with mankind, he lied with a woman real quick. We all know the scripture, but I want to bring a point out about it. Read that. The book of Leviticus, chapter 20, verse 13. If a man also lie with mankind, as he lie with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Now, some people may, may look at this Bible now and say, well, things have changed. <laughs> things have changed because society has progressed. And we can't look at homosexual as it was and as they were operating in the Old Testament. Right? But then I hear these stories now about little boys and little girls with, who, who, who actually are raped and, and actually their whole life will be influenced, will, will actually be dictated off this action now. Mm -hmm. They can't change their life. And I'm going to ask, even though we're under grace now, <clears throat> if there's a child that's abused in this manner, should not this scripture apply? Yes, ma'am. If you found out that a man or a man that you knew, a neighbor or whatever, did something to your five or six year old son now, now he's acting in a way that you, you, you know, he's exhibiting some abnormal behavior and you don't know why. And you find this man. You understand? How many people, I'm, I know, innocent, and me being a spiritual man. I would have to really dig deep not to execute what we said here in Leviticus, the 20th chapter. <laughs> yes, sir. Since you went to the Old Testament, right? Mm hmm. New Testament, okay? First, yes. First Corinthians 6 and 9, I'm probably, I'm sure a lot of the people tuning in have, have heard this before. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. Nor effeminate, this is the guy that came in to try to provoke you. Nor mm -hmm. abusers of themselves with mankind. Abusing themselves with mankind. Now, really? that, uh, apparently that could mean anything. That, I, I've, be, I've been breaking this down to people. What do you think of homosexuals? What do you think of people who are gay? I said, that's irrelevant. Let's see what the Mosai says. Yes. I brought onto the scripture, oh, that could, what the abusers of them, what does that mean? Abusers of themselves with mankind. That yeah. could mean anything, right? You're going to get it in the Greek, right? All right. I'm going to get it in the English Standard Version, okay. which I need to get a copy of next time I'm out on road. What's the English Standard Version? A, a so-called modern-day translation, right? Okay. okay. Or... It says, or oh, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice, read the elder, homosexuality. 
And that's in their translation. That's in the English translation. That's the abusers of, of man. Abusers of men. It's right there. So, now, these are scriptures now. So, So how do we avoid this world's imposition on us? It leads us to that. How do we avoid it? Can we escape Sodom and Gomorrah? It's everywhere, right? And I'm putting this out there, and that, and I and I I know that the Spirit had me come here because out of nowhere I'm like, let me get up and get here because now we can't keep talking about what they're doing because we know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The question is, what are we going to do? Homosexual will continue to rise until it overtake what's normal. Mm -hmm. It's not going to stop. Them looking to kill us off and separate family is going to continue. And the righteous will become a few, just like during Abram's time, just like during Lot's time. Because they're not just letting loose the not uh, uh, the homosexuals on the on, on the population. They're not just they're not just letting loose the poisoners and sorcerers through the healthcare system on the population. They're also letting loose the uh, 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 the, the nihilists, people who care for nothing, and the satanists mm -hmm. on the people. Mm -hmm. So, so instead of us just having Bible class, which is good. Why don't we start having nation class? Mm -hmm. If we know that these things are going on, let's appoint a sister and put her in school so that she can be a midwife. And within six months, we have a nurse that's going throughout all of our areas in which we've taken her from place to place. And believe me, there's enough babies where she'll be taken care of. Mm -hmm. Where that's her position. Let's have it where a lawyer or someone draw up the paperwork and make an agreement that if we're going to have our children in these schools, if we're going to have them in these schools, that it's agreed upon that our religious freedoms be protected. That I have a right, because I don't agree with homosexuality, not to have a homosexual teach my child. Because that will become their example of authority. And they have more time with my child than I do. Or if we have a school teacher who has the acumen and, and the power to do these certain things, let's set her up where the money we get instead of paying them goes to her. And she have a homeschooling thing. And, and, and then go and take the SC. You can go, you can go take the test with the government through homeschooling on your own. You don't need no charter school. So these are the things that can be organized amongst us, and the sisters have the power to do these things. Y'all have the knowledge, y'all have the will. Y'all, we're always talking about what we like. We're waiting for the kingdom to just change everything. It says the kingdom is within us. It don't come by observation. So what you do now is what you're going to be doing until Christ comes. So if you want a position of work. We, we know this world is not going to change. But we can get together in a point and support each other. And through that, the Most High is going to shine through the work. And it's going to influence others because they're going to see a spiritual organization that looks out for its own. And it doesn't take a lot of people to do this. That's the conversation and meetings we need to be having. We need to appoint, just like this government appoint people in certain places to do certain things, we got to appoint people according to their gifts and support them with their duties. That's the answer. People are talking about fleeing and this, that, and the other. Everything is just individual. But no one is talking about what, who's going to be able to deliver a baby when we're in the wilderness. Mm hmm Who's going to be able to do, do you understand? So what we do now, I find myself building things more from scratch and not buying certain things. Because I know that I'm going to have to build with my hands. 
You understand? So I'm here talking to y'all now, and even though this wasn't going to be a part of the radio show, this is what I was going to talk about in our private meeting, but I'm glad it went to the radio show. It's time. It's a shame that all of our gifts and know-how and acumen is being controlled and used by these nihilists, these Satanists, these, these people who are looking to destroy us, and all of our work is into building them to destroy us. It makes no sense. We have everything, but we have nothing because we're not together with what we have. So we believe in Christ, and we believe in the body. Look how the disciples were operating. Look how Peter and them, they dropped their net, but guess what? He said, what you fishers of men? Why do you think Christ was able to travel from this place? There wasn't no airplane. Ships was the equivalent of airplanes back then. Mm -hmm. So that ship became fishers of men. Every place Christ went was because he went and converted fishermen. Not because they had a net. Because they had a ship. So every, you understand? So everybody have a piece. But don't exactly know where you fit. Mm -hmm. So we talk about these things not to say, well, listen, this is what's going on and this is what's going on. We have the power to, to stop it from happening to us. And if we can stop it from happening to us, we're the refuge for those mm -hmm. Who eyes become open after after us. But there's no refuge and no place where people can escape spiritually and know what to do. Even when they get the truth, they just go back to their regular life. When there should be an option when a sister is pregnant and we say, okay, here's a card to the sister over here in Birmingham. You call her. She'll tell you exactly what to do three months from now. Okay, you need to travel from here to here. Here's a card. Call this. That's where we are right now. I'm not waiting for this world to tell me what I need to do. And that's why things are stagnant because we are now at the point where it's beyond just teaching scripture. We all know where Israel already. We all know the, these things already. It's the next phase that leads us to a higher spiritual plane. And it's, operate, it's an operation that takes us to the next level spiritually. It's not just reading scripture. Y you understand? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you, we can, we can all deal with this moment and understand that it's right and it's the spirit of the most high this moment, and it is. In the urgency of this moment, I go someplace and everybody go about their own life. It'll be more urgent a day from now. It'll be more urgent a week from now than it is right now. Because a lot of people are asking, oh, how can we do this? What can we do next? What? Listen, with the people we have, we must set up an operation of refuge. And some people might ask, ask, what is that? The same way a sister who's having a baby or now have a refuge from vaccines because we have a midwife. Mm -hmm. That's refuge. And the way we operate with each other now is the refuge to the wilderness. We're going to already be working. You understand? But if you're doing that's what you're going to be doing when the tanks come. That's what you're going to be doing when the boots come. The Holy Spirit is going to guide us through our operation and work that we do. And our work begins the knowledge and understanding setting up the refuge. And that's what I'm here in Manchester to tell you, brothers and sisters. It's time. We've already set things up all over the earth spiritually where we have people who are down with the most high all over the earth. So a physical refuge have already been established to some degree. But what are we going to do when we all get together? Tear each other apart because we don't know where we fit? And see, and that's what 
the church was, even with Christ. Everyone had an operation. Look at Luke. He was a, he, he was a Theophilus. Mm -hmm. Look at Peter. Okay, we connected? Yeah, you're back on. Okay. I apologize, but you know when the spirit is working, you got the devil working on the other side with, with that red button. <laughs> pushing it, saying, oh, we, this cannot go out. This is the spirit we've been trying to stop. But we're back. Okay, so who wanted to say something here? Um, there's a brother from West Africa, but I think we probably, probably lost him in that. Okay, there's a brother from West Africa who wanted something, who had something to say. Um, if you have something to say, call back. We'll get you in. But uh, we need organization. We need Sisters to organize, we need brothers to organize, find out what we can do, and let's just start at this point. We let, let's start at getting one person and that we make a midwife for the whole country, and she'll train other people. But let, let's find a sister that can volunteer, and she'll be a midwife. We've got, we've got nurses in the in group, in the as we speak. All right, then. Well, let's get one of them, and they can make more money being mid midwives amongst Israel than they can do right there. See? There it is. I'm sitting there looking at it the whole time. Let's see. That's, 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 that's wild. All right? I'm looking at it like a, we need a nurse. We need, we need a midwife. She's a midwife. Natasha's a teacher. Look at that. <laughs> and we got a teacher here. Look at this. You know? And see, you should be the ga you should be the gathering of Christ, the head thing, and put the whole thing together, get your assistance and all that, because whatever curriculum you're teaching could be across the board. You understand? It's, it's to a point now where even we, we even thought of that, having a school. We got, we got one, we got the academy, but we think about having a school where there's a platform where whatever you're teaching one child, you'd be teaching all over the world. Mm -hmm. Why can't we have all of our people in that grade or whatever, these different grades, come in and get the acumen and go to their respective areas and take the SATs? Yeah. You understand? Therefore, we're foregoing, we're making a refuge where our children, not only that, while they're learning that, instead of that hot mess they teaching in hygiene and all that garbage they teaching, we, we, we could give a lesson on Moses, give them a lesson on Christ. You understand? Yeah. In the midst of that, keeping morality as part of the school and in the upbringing. Mm -hmm. Hey, it, it, you, this is something that we can do. You're doing it every day. Well, you know, I mean, yeah. it's funny, like I said, it's funny you're saying this, it's like the spirit, because we here, over here in Manchester right now, this is what we're actually trying to, to establish as, yeah. as we speak. We're looking to get a building, that's our building. Yeah, to do some of these things, homeschooling and have a class at a certain age coming in because what we realize with with the other communities, right? The other communities, I, for example, here in the UK, like the Muslim community and the Jewish community, I'm using them as a, as a prime example. They will have a public school setting, right? Yeah. That their children will go to public school. But the real education takes place in their mosque. The real education for them takes place in their in their synagogues. Mm -hmm. We don't have that. We rely on the system to give us our education. So we have to look at that and say, all right, then, okay, we need to be educating our children, our our, our adults, in in that they, they understand that okay, the, 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 okay, this kingdom is to this kingdom. Like we said earlier, when you when when you were, when you were speaking earlier, you said that yeah, when you were travel when you're traveling to certain places. You know, you have to look a certain way because yeah. of the system that you're in. Yeah. So our our people need to have that so called that dual identity then, that Clark Kent Superman identity where okay, for the world for the world if you have to, you know, you have to go and do the world stuff, but when it comes to the real grassroots things, there's a refuge for you to come then and learn and do things that benefit your community until we can then operate in a way that we don't need that 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 sector and that is that is what that is profoundly the next step where we need to be where we need to be as a as a nation of people because now we know who we are that was that was a, that was a missing factor from before because we never knew but now we know so let's start making 
having yeah having having that nowhere you know and this is something that we are we you know we are trying to establish here yeah within 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 this, within this group here in 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 the UK you know that you know what's the next step what's the next it's just like this phases before before the disciples could go into the spiritual aspects of what the movement was all about they had to learn the first phase mm -hmm. of coming together Mm -hmm. and, and, and understanding what faith is and how to exercise and how to live with faith. And that's one thing that we have to break. We, mm -hmm. That's a breakthrough in itself because a lot of us are afraid to do things based on our dependence. We're being taken care of by Big Brother. Mm -hmm. None of us have really, we, we, have, we have actually seen faith work, but in spurts. We never lived by faith to the point where Everything that we have is because of faith. Mm -hmm. And but what do you think going to be going going on in the wilderness? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you understand? So the mindset we just wean our way off of this system, mm -hmm. and it first begin with having something else to do. Mm -hmm. Here we go. We in it now. We only got thirty minutes before we go offline, and I'm I'm going to talk to you. Uh, we're going to talk. And there's a few other questions I have to ask. But let's get a few phone calls in here real quick because I know some people. All right. Um, let me go to the first call. I have Deacon Xavier. Yeah. Who was there from the beginning. Let me pull him in. Yes. Yes, Xavier. Shalom. Oh. 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 Um, I was just listening in. I don't know how I got pulled. Okay. That's Shalom. fine. Shalom. Good to hear from you. All right. All right. Um, All right. Hi everybody, you're listening to the Search Engine International on Block Talk Radio. The numbers to call is 646-200-4309. The lines are almost full. All right, and we only have uh, 28 minutes to go before the, the end of this broadcast. All right, let me go straight to the callers. We're going to keep each call down to about two minutes or less. So please get your questions in. And while the elder responds, I will put you back in the queue. After which I've done so, please push one, and that will take you, up, take you out the, the call line, all right? Um, thank you again. Let's go to the next caller from the 716 area code. We have, um, brother, is it brother Michael? Or, oh, sorry, excuse me, sister Michelle. Excuse me. Shalom, um, Elder uh, Ricardo, Elder Dodge is Mitchell. Mitchell, or oh, brother Mitchell. Excuse me. My name, my is, good. My name is Jack <laughs> I've been young, everybody pronounced it Michelle, but it, it's Mitchell. Um, I got a comment on the uh, the vaccine. The uh, I'm out here in the United States, and uh, I was just listening to my radio, just turn it on, and on the black station, they got uh, they this commercial came on, nice melody, nice music. They saying, oh, if you got meningitis, and they name off a whole bunch of other stuff. They say, yeah, come on down to your local uh, pharmacy and fill out a form so you can get vaccinated. And wow. then at the same time, my wife. She works at the hospital, and you know when we when I call her, she put me on hold. They uh the calling machine says, okay, we um you've been hearing of how bad vaccines are. Well, trust us, they're not. Come on and bring you and your family down to get vaccinated. So <laughs> I just want to make a comment on that. And man, and I'm also in the academy. This is my third time around in the academy. All praise to the Most High, and that's all I got. <laughs> Well, thank you, brother. And it is deep because I notice even in the United States, there's one of these drug marks all over the place. Either Walgreens, Walmart, Rite Aid, CVS, everything I'm just mentioning are places where it's phar phar pharmaceuticals can be sold. Off the shelf, pharmacies, are every, every, pharmacies everywhere now. Now I realize that when, they, when the thing breaks down, when they look, do these forced vaccinations, these are going to be centers for the forced vaccinations. They're going to be forced. That's why they're dealing with the Ebola thing. And, and this, that, was a, that was a test run in Liberia. Because what, what's going to, what they're going to say is, you don't have to get them. But, in all of you, but if you don't have them, you are a threat to this overall society, so you must be quarantined. That's why you hear this word quarantine over and over and over again. They're going to say, well, listen, you don't have to get them. Same thing, they, they, they tested it in the school. Your child don't have to get them, but they can't come to school. 
They already put these things in our minds so that when you're being separated or shunned or, or demonized, they, you know, there's no pushback. So this, this, don't forget, why do you think Obama says he's going to send thousands of troops over to Africa for the Ebola? What, what can the army, what can soldiers do to stop Ebola? <laughs> so, so obviously, obviously, the, these guys are put in place to do force vaccination through gunpoint. Mm -hmm. So that's where we are. So eventually, they're going to have these centers in place and saying, listen, you've got to go get vaccinated, and these are going to be killer shots, which are the shots that totally destroy you or make you, or make you spread the disease mm -hmm. so that they can quarantine you. Okay, what's the next call? All right, um, Brother uh, Michelle, do me, um, Mitchell, do me a favor, please, and push one. That will just take you out the call queue. Let me go to Sister Sheena from the 330 area code. Shalom, Elder. How are you all? Um, yeah. I spoke with you all a week ago from Cleveland about the Ebola thing, and I had so much information to say, even about the homosexual thing, but I can't get it all in in two minutes, so I think I'll just hold it for another conversation. Well, just say as much as you can within two minutes. I know. Okay. Well... Last time that we talked, you said that we know anyone with Ebola, and I pulled my kids out of school actually this week, but my daughter, her, my four-year-old, she has a teacher. Well, first of all, there was a teacher that's put on quarantine here in Medina, okay, with like armed guards around the house and everything. Well, that teacher um, is my daughter's teacher's child's teacher, if that makes any sense. I know it sounds crazy, but... You know, it seems like up here in Ohio, anyone that has any sort of affiliation with a person is, you know, being put on a monitored list. And if you're put on this list, like you have travel restrictions, just a lot of things to limit your movement. And they've been really pushing for a ban list for people that are on this list, even if you don't have any symptoms or the disease at all, to where you can't fly. Um, so they're really just trying to put restrictions on your travel. Um, and, and I was looking at something, because a lot of the people that they've been releasing, they're saying that they're asymptomatic, but asymptomatic just means that you have a virus um, <laughs> and you just don't show the symptoms, um, but the virus could still be spread. And I was looking on the CDC's website today at some of the treatments, um, and I know, Elder Carr, in some of the lessons you've mentioned, like IVs and what's really in the IVs, and they were saying for the treatment they use an IV, which is a... Uh, Intra, intravenous therapy. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I wrote this down. Okay. Yeah, the IV. It's called intravenous fluids. That's what they've been giving the people with Ebola. Now, this is what's crazy because that's an IV. They call it intravenous therapy. And it just means that the substance goes directly into your vein. But there are two different types of substances that they use. But from what I was researching, most of these substances are like blood plasma. Like the one that's intravenous immunoglobin, and that's made from, like, thousands of donors that donate plasma that they put, you know, that's something that they use to put in the IV, and the risk of that is that you could catch disease. And they also use propofol, which is a hypnotic anesthetic suppressant, and it could cause, like, brain damage, and, it, and it, it's an induced coma. So it's just crazy what's um, <clears throat> in a lot of the vaccinations. Now, I'm trying to make this quick. I did want to speak on your main topic about the homosexuality, okay? Okay, go ahead. Let's speak about that because that's something that I've personally dealt with. And what's crazy is that it was introduced to me at a young age, like with childhood friends playing girlfriend, boyfriend, one girl pretending to be the husband, the other one pretending to be the wife, and plus other stuff that I saw on TV. So I just wanted to put, you know, it's something that I'm ashamed of because it's transferred into my adulthood life, and everybody's situation is different. Everyone gets into that sodomy behavior from different areas, from child molestation to things that you see with your eyes, which is why you got to really watch what gets into your eyesight. But it's to the point now, if, if I could say something to help one person. Hold on, sister. What do you mean something that you are ashamed of? What do you mean by that? 
Well, I'm ashamed of the sin itself. It makes me feel so this like nasty, just nasty. And what's crazy, Elder Ricard, is so many people I have met. I've had a lot of jobs, okay? I just turned 30, but I've had so many jobs, and I have met so many gay people from black gay men to white gay men to transsexual gay women. And what the devil meant for evil, the most high will use it for the good. You know what I'm saying? I want to go back to how I got into that activity as a child. You really have to watch who your kids play with, like who your kids are around, because everybody doesn't raise your kid, their kids the way that you raise your kids. I mentioned to you that because when we were on the show two weeks ago, and I was waiting all last week to talk to you guys. That's why I just felt like I had to get all of this out. I wasn't planning on talking about this, but you told me to go ahead. Go ahead. Keep on going. Go ahead. Okay. You told me that I should pull my kids out of the school, you know what I'm saying, because of the thing up here in Ohio. They are quarantining people that just have the weirdest affiliations with people. So I went ahead and I did that process this week. I was already homeschooling my six-year-old son, Judah, but I went ahead and added my three- and four-year-old also. So what I'm trying to say is about this sodomy thing. I was watching a documentary, documentary, Alistair Crowley. The agenda is to sodomize your kids. And I'm sorry, I am so out of breath. I get so nervous when I talk to you guys. Like, I'm just always nervous. So excuse my tone of voice. But Alistair Crowley, his agenda, he said, with your children, we're going to sodomize them in the locker room, sodomize them in the school. Even before I pulled my kids out, going through what I have went through, I'm always afraid of something, some way my kid being sodomized. I mean, kids riding the school bus, what if these kids come from a family where they have two moms or two dads? That kid sees that behavior, and they try to impose that on your child. My son, Judah, when he was in preschool, they were playing dress-up, and he brought a picture home. They had him dressed in a princess outfit with a crown. And he was, he was like, hesitant to show me the picture because something in his spirit was probably like, Mommy was going to be really mad at this. But he showed it to me. And first, I did scold him about it because I didn't want him to think that that was okay. I'm just trying to use that story to say, with the Project 10 agenda and the teachers will tell you up front, like, we don't judge, we don't judge. You're taking a huge risk with your kids being in the public school system. I know we can't be around them 24-7, but from having my kids in a public school setting, going to a home school setting, I have way more control. And I can control, at least until they're 18, you know, what is exposed to them, and at the same time warn them, because like the Bible says, be wise as a serpent, but harmless as a dove. And so a lot of people, going back to people that deal with sodomy, <clears throat> They feel that nobody can understand where it's coming from because, you know, people haven't experienced that. But I always use my experience to try to reach out to them because at the end of the day, like with any other thing, you're either living for the most high or you're living for yourself. I mean, you could get so mad and want to hit something. And, and, and what was your experience for those who probably didn't hear your experience before? Well, my experience uh, is dealing with sodomy um, and like I was saying, how it was introduced to me at a young age, playing with friends, girlfriend, boyfriend, you, like that. You, you mean, let's talk. Let's be in behavior. Yes. Like, I mean, you know, the girl would come home and we would say, hey, honey, how was your day? You know, like kiss each other, that little small stuff. And, and at the end of the day, it was something that was put into my spirit in and, and my later life, like when I was 18, 19, engaged in sodomite behavior. So it's something that got, and like I, you know, I've worked for the YWCA. I mean, you got kids that are at home dealing with each other, like siblings. I don't think people realize our kids deal with such extreme situations. I'm coming on here to say guard your children because Isaiah, it makes me think of Isaiah, it says that the men are lovers of themselves, quick to murder, shed blood. The sodomy, is the, sodomy is their sin, and they hide it not, and our brothers don't hide it, and there's a lot of brothers even that are dealing with that. So, you know, somebody that's listening is dealing with that, and Elder Ricard, I was, like, <laughs> going to beg you. I know you're probably not going to let me read Romans 7. To anybody that's dealing with it, like, Romans 7 and Romans 6, but Romans 7, it really helps me deal with, just just staying grounded, you know what I mean? Because, like I said, either at the end of the day, you're living for yourself or you're living for the most high. What I wanted to also say was 
some people say they're born like that, and that's true, not realizing that that's like, that could be a generational curse passed on you. Maybe somebody in your family was dealing with that. I had to pray to the Most High. That spirit didn't pass over my kids. No, much, no matter how much I feel like I had it under control, it's a real spirit, and you can't never feel like it can't happen to you. Like, it's just crazy, and I had to really pray strong because I don't want that nasty, perverted, disgusted feeling. That, that spirit to pass over my kids. You know what I'm saying? Let me, let, let me ask you this question. Did you real quick, because we have to go, because other people are coming out. I know, out, I know. I have to, being that, it, because you, I think that you would have more of an, uh, an understanding of the sensibility when it comes to what, what people who, who've been taken advantage of and are like that go through. So because of that, What's the what, what? What do you think the best way would be? What would be the best way to break ground with them to 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 extend help to them without offending? Well, for one, I think we have to. You know, it's a uh, worldwide minister here. When I was into the like Baptist church, Reverend Vernon. Pastor Vernon, one thing he did say that stuck with me, like when you're doing this work, you really have to act as if you're in an emergency room and you'll accept any, not accept anybody, anybody that wants to help. You're willing to treat anybody, no matter how severe the situation. And I think sometimes being in that position where you're trying to help people, you don't want to have affiliations with those types of people because you don't want that to come off on you. You, you don't want people to even know you're affiliated with those types of people. But I me just, dealing with it personally, I'm not a, oh, I'm sorry. This is what I'm asking you in short, though, because we don't have a lot of time. I know. What I'm asking I'm you in short is, without offending them, what would be the most effective way to get to them to help them? I would say the, see, it's hard to speak from your position, Elder Ricard, because I'm just assuming that you're you haven't dealt with that issue, so it's kind of hard to approach that person if you haven't really dealt with something like that because they're gonna feel like you don't understand how they feel because you haven't dealt with that feeling. Once you break the ice and let them know, hey, I'm dealt with that, so you can't use that card with me. Then, from my experience, they have become more susceptible to hearing what I have to say well, because the majority of them feel like you can't relate to them. Well, sister, you actually answered the question. Right. Um, I mean, I, I, never, I mean, just being the truth at the end of the day. Because that makes sense. Anyone that have dealt with something have the grounds to be able to help others because they have experienced it. So, right. That's the key point. It's hard to be able to talk to someone about they're dealing with, and you don't, and, and you don't know what they're going through. Exactly. So. Hopefully, this conversation and this broadcast get out there because who knows? Maybe some people would want to speak to you and talk to you because they can relate to what you went through and had the same thing happen. So, well, sister, we got to put you on hold because we got a lot of people in a short amount of time. But this, I understand. I, if we just read Romans seven. That'll help so much. Romans six and seven. I really think it'll be a blessing. And thanks for having me on and letting me speak. Well, thank you, sister. You always bring some good points. I appreciate you. Okay. Bless you, brother. Shalom, Elder. Shalom. What's next? No, I guess, I mean, she said so much, right? You mm -hmm. might have to go back and listen, and listen to it again. I'm yeah. almost certain she said that they, they were trying to quarantine people who, was, who, who knew people who had Ebola yeah. at, the, at the beginning there. Did, did you get that bit? Yeah. You read me? You know, so... <laughs> So you didn't have it, no, you just have to know somebody that had it? Yeah. And they got a thing where now they're saying, even if you're not tested for it, I mean, even if you're not showing symptoms, you can still be viral. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. And they can they can now quarantine you on you being viral, but it just have not come to a head at this point. So they're just saying, we can quarantine you out of anyone we want. Yeah, anybody will, yeah. So, so in a nutshell, that will be their cover mm -hmm. when they're dragging people away to tell their cover will be okay that he or she was showing signs of Ebola. Oh, we thought they're gonna show them signs. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> they said that it takes fifty days it could take up to fifty days to show yeah. symptoms of it all. 
Yeah. I mean, I wonder why at the end of all these laws, it's people being incarcerated. Well, in, in, the, in, in DAA, if you get Ebola, if you got swine, but at the end of it, you locked up somewhere. So could it be that's the plan? I mean, they got fresh sheep, fresh sheep and FEMA camps all over the United States right now. So they paying these internment uh, 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 security guards for nothing, but not for not for long. You're gonna be sitting, they're gonna be a bunch of them sitting there with those yellow suits on. That's that's gonna be the next phase. But what we got next? Come on, let's uh, let's just, let's just uh, um, yeah. a mama with a with a comment. Let me go over here. From yeah. Before we went to the area code. Hello. One second, I think this is moving a bit slow now. This is Sister Charlotte from Massachusetts. How are you, Elder Ricard? Um, oh. Brother Godra, how are you doing? No, but um, yeah, I'm I'm gonna pass because I had like a few things to say. But Elder Ricard, I just want to thank you for what you just said um, when you're speaking to the sister and you said there are some things that others go through and you know they may be she may be able to relate to other people. I mean, this is unrelated to her situation, but yeah. you really, really just opened up something really good in me to hear that we need people to talk to or deal with that's going through the same thing we're dealing with. So I'm going to send you guys an email about something that I want to talk about. But I want to talk about some vaccine um, experiences that I've had with my grandchildren, but we'll save that for the next time and let somebody else come now, on. You know, you know what? You know what? We, we'll give you five minutes on that because that's important. That's on topic. Let, let, let me hear what happened to you. Your grand okay, well, um, uh, my granddaughter, who's two years old, she... You know um, Oh, hold up. What we'll do is we'll take this 10 minutes overtime, if y'all don't mind. Is that, that okay? Okay, we'll take this 10 minutes overtime for the phone call so that if you're on a call, if you're not on a call now, it will drop in about 10 minutes. But we're going to take it 10 minutes overtime, so if you're on a call, we'll still be able to take your questions. All right? And if you do fall or drop out of uh, the call, we are live on the gathering of sites. Sabbath uh, stream stream right now. We're streaming live from Manchester, uh, United Kingdom in England. Okay? All right, go ahead. Go ahead, sister. You have the floor. Okay. Um, yeah, my granddaughter, um, she's two years old now, but she only had one vaccine in, you know, the two years that she's been here, and that was a hepatitis B. Okay, and she, um, from the time she got the vaccine, she has been sick. She's had show signs of autism and things like that. So we basically, um, well, my son is raising her as a single father with my help. And from the time she got that vaccine, the baby has been through a lot. Right now she's, she's, she's very active and um, she repeats everything. The baby has dreams. She sees things. You know, she's very absorbing. You know, she, she absorbs a lot. It's hard to teach her if you sit down and teach her but she can repeat everything, like she repeats like four or five syllable words and things like that, but it has affected her, okay, but as far as her, um, I took her to the doctor about a month ago, she had a, we, this is the first time we took her to the doctor since she was born, because we just stayed away from the doctors, every time she got sick, um, I anointed her, gave her herbs, chlorosil and things like that, and she's always gotten better, but the child is going through so much, plus with her not having her mother, you know what I'm saying? And then I have two other grandchildren. My daughter had a set of twins. They gave her a vitamin K shot, and one of the twins ended up, they were, they've been sick ever since. I think they're better now because they're about five or six months. They were born in May. Okay, then my grandson's baby, they had to rush him to Bay State. They gave him a vitamin K shot. I asked the nurse for the, you know, the, 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 um, the symptoms, from the shot, the nurses was ignoring me. Every symptom that was on that paper, the baby was going through breathing and everything. You know what I'm saying? So I know for a fact that those shots, and I, I keep asking people, like, who do you know that has told you that, oh, my baby is having blood clot problems? I've never heard any of my friends tell me that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just trying to, you know, put it out there for these young people. To understand. And it's a lot of, they're going against the word of, the man, like the man, don't, they don't have any, any 
um, say so when it comes to their children. And the women are afraid because the doctors keep telling them, oh, if your baby start to bleed and all this stuff. And so they get scared and they allow the people to give it to them, you know what I'm saying? But I've had, you know, some really, really serious experience where the babies were very sick or whatever, and I just pray for them. But I know for a fact that those vaccines, those vitamin K vaccines, that's the reason why people are allergic to peanut butter and things like that. And the purpose is Jewish woman told me that the reason why people are allergic to peanut butter is because that's going to be the surviving food. But if you're allergic to it, you swell up and, you know, go through all these changes and you won't be able. So this is why a lot of people, you know, they get their vitamin K shot. And that's been out like the last 10, 15 years you've been hearing about allergies to peanut butter and stuff. So um, the experience is that, you know, these babies are having is like life threatening sometimes. So that's all I wanted to say. Well, thank you, sister, and I and I hope that everyone out there is listening because, and I thank the Most High because this is a breakthrough. I'll tell you this because when you look at the eugenics agenda with Margaret Sanger, she, one thing she said was we're going to. He, she says we're going to kill off these undesirables like weeds, and he she she, she said that. What we need to do is weaken the stance of their protection, which is the man. And if we can influence the woman who's the caregiver to kill off her own, we have accomplished the agenda, quote, unquote. So her, their whole agenda was to change the mindset of women. So if women actually be the weapon used against their own children, and to hear you in reverse of that shows that the Most High Spirit is waking up not only the brothers but the sisters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because they have moved the brothers out of the way to the point where there is no protection. And I say brothers, I'm talking about men in general. Women yeah. decide on what? That's why they say, uh, when, even with abortion and all that, mm-hmm. I got a right to choose. This is my body. So they, in everything. Mm-hmm. They have faith where the woman really is the deciding factor. So to have a strong sister like you witness what happened and be, and become a voice so that sisters can help protect their children is a blessing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we okay. just got to pray for those who allow themselves to, to, you know, be afraid of what man says to them or whatever, and it's like they're just, they are just they close their minds, you know, to, to what you're saying to them, and they'll agree with me and everything, and the next thing I hear is like, you know, oh, well, I had to give them to them because they could. No, I've never heard of anything like that. I've heard of people bleeding or whatever, and, you know, but this year, like, what are the chances that, you know, I have 30 grandchildren come December, and none of them have ever suffered from hemorrhaging or blood clotting, Come on, these things just don't happen. It didn't make sense. It doesn't make sense for you to buy a story like that. You know what I'm saying? So, And another thing is, Elder Carl, you said that I've been telling people for the last 25 years that shaking baby syndrome. Yes. Okay. With the um, the, the stuff that they, the, uh, there's this, this thing, this, this, this thing that they shoot cows up with also will cause you to hemorrhage. Like if you could eat a burger and hemorrhage, you could drink a glass of milk. Um, eat a slice of cheese and began to bleed. So people that's having bleeding problems, I really want them to check their diets out like maybe 24 hours after they've eaten anything that had to do with a cow. And it's always best to use organic. You know what I'm saying? So we've got to be careful because they are accusing a lot, of, and I've been saying this, that they accuse a lot of mothers of killing these children. And what it is is that the, the cow's milk that they give them, the vaccines with mixed together, it busts blood vessels. And so many parents are sitting in jail, and they don't have a way out. You know, they even get them to plead guilty, knowing that they're innocent. You know what I'm saying? So we've just got to let the Holy Spirit tap into us and pay close attention to what's happening and what they're trying to do, because they're trying to blame everything on us. All right, Sister you know? Wilson. We we have 90 seconds before we go into overtime. So thank you, sister. Okay, and, thank you uh, so much, and bless you. Okay. All right, okay. shalom. I'm glad we were able to hear this. this is, and you know what? We have to hear this, because if there's no platform in which we can actually talk about these things that we see every day, they would just pick us off for years. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, we got about 60 seconds, but we're still going. Let's go. All right, let's go to the next caller from the 717. Okay, we're going to extend 10 minutes over. All right. Jericho, we have Sister Lucy with a comment. Bless. Hello? Hello? I want to ask, I'm to give a testimony about my pregnancy. Can you hear me? Yes. Come on. We got two minutes. Let's go. Okay. Well, I had a son about two years ago, 2012, and when I was given birth, and it's all praise to the Most High that me and my husband was able to even be approached by your church by, you know, gathering online. But once we actually noticed what was wrong with the vaccine, we didn't have any vaccine for our son either. But also I wanted to let um, the women know how they actually threaten the women when they're giving birth in the hospital. <laughs> they actually mm. threaten the women. And they actually um, tell them that if you don't give shots, that they'll actually take you to court and can take your baby from you and won't allow you to even leave the hospital before they actually, like, have a judge order to try and take your baby away from you. And that was some of the threats that was approached to me. But, excuse me, I'm walking, so I'm kind of out of breath. Well, just real quick, but, tell us, sister, how did you deal with it? What happened? How did it work out? Well, since I've actually known what you brothers were telling us as far as how they would come up with the tactics, we told them that we were, like, really well-informed and we're making informed decisions for our children and that if anything do happen, we'll be reliable for it. And that we also have a um, lawyer that if they want to contact our lawyer, they can discuss it with them. And they kind of back off from there. <laughs> from that point on that, <laughs> well, actually well, back well, off. On that one. There you go. That, there you go, sister. Yep. Hey, fight with what you got. Exactly. Right. And I also wanted to say, since then, my son is just so strong. I'm telling you, he's, 14, he's 17 months now. He's singing the Hebrew credo. He's saying the alphabet. A, B, C, through Z, and backwards. He's singing the Hebrew songs that the brothers be playing up. It's just like this boy is just so amazing. And then he does everything before most of the children that's around his age. And people be so surprised by it. But I'm like, he doesn't get vaccinated. Hey, hey, praise the most high. Well, listen, you got a round of applause on that one. And I do. I do praise the most high because the most high even blessed us with a daughter. And we didn't have her vaccinated, and she's just as strong, if not stronger. Because she came out, she was holding her head up. I'm telling you, she held her head, her neck up just for me to take a picture of her and didn't even drop her neck. By two months, she's laughing. She's, like, rolling over. But these are all the symptoms my children showed after not having them vaccinated at all. <laughs> well, sister, I'm, I'm, we're proud of you, and that's the example that's needed. You understand? Exactly. <laughs> You, you and your children are the next generation. Quam Amen. <laughs> Amen. Okay. I'll pray to the Most High and thank you, brothers, just for the information. Right. And right. since then, I just want to say thank you and bless you all. All right. Bless you, sister. All right. All right. Uh, moving, moving on right quick to the next caller. We have um, Sister uh, Jenna with a question and a comment. Well, the sisters are vocal tonight, but all sisters oh, yeah. <laughs> are coming up. Yeah. How you doing, Jenna? Bless you. Gina. Gina, I'm sorry. Hello, it's Gina. Hi, how are you? I'm calling from Cincinnati, Ohio, and this is so crazy because me and my mom discussed two weeks ago, my mom said, we never had any issues with allergies or asthma, and I know that your grandmother never knew what that word was. So you know, it kind of intrigued me, and I said, I'm going to look this up. So I Googled, how are the vaccines um linked up to allergies because I have three children, 10, 6, and almost 18 months. My 10-year-old, yeah. she is allergic to everything. And the main thing that came up on the screen is the vaccine that they give in the beginning is associated to the peanut allergy. So she has to have the, the EpiPen at school. So every year the nurse call, contacts me like we need to doctor's office to send the information, you know, else she'll be put out of school. Well, she's been hounding me for the last two weeks. They sent the information, but I'm just now realizing it's these vaccines. So now what I'm in search of is um, a natural pediatrician that treats with herbal remedies and not these medications. And 
the other two children, they haven't had any issues, but I won't be giving, getting no more vaccines. I don't care if they put me out. They already think I'm crazy because I'm always talking about the Illuminati and all the stuff that's going on. Um, I've had two Khazar Jew landlords. I own my own business. All I do is fight and pray, fight and pray. And, and that's and what, what I'm going to have to what, do. What is your business, sister? I own a dry cleaners. Okay. In what part of uh, Cincinnati? Uh, in, uh, Coleraine Township. And do uh, you right guys here. have a GOCC affiliate? Right here. Get your I'm sorry? Right here. I mean, we're telling everybody in your <laughs> This is where you get your they, clothes. Let's support her. And sister, Midwest you Cleaners. What's Midwest the name of it? Cleaners. Midwest Cleaners. Midwest Cleaners. And you know what? We need to talk about how to put chains of them every place until you out of there. And have them run themselves. That's right. You all know how to set it up. Yeah, I've so, been in business for 23 years. All I'm 40, 43 years old now. Look at that. And and, and and you know about those vac you know about those vaccines now, right? Oh, no, nah, we we crushing that. That's under our feet. But wh- right. one other comment. Go I ahead. me and my husband have discussed it. Um we cannot raise our children in traditional church. I cannot have them go through the lies that I went through because yeah. my parents just didn't know any better. I, yeah. I can't I can't have them go through this. Um, your word, the, what you guys are teach is such a, it's so strong, it's a meat, and that's too strong for the children. Do you, do you guys have something on the website for children? Is there something that you could suggest about that? Yeah, I, I'm glad you're asking because we have miss working on something now. And are you in the academy? No, I'm not, but I am going to be signing up for the next academy. Okay, because in the academy, I'm going to be showing these flashcards that the sisters sent from the United States. Okay, great. States. I have them, and there are some wonderful flashcards where you can learn Hebrew for the children and all that. And so what we're going to do, with a lawyer have one of those unique Morgan Freeman type voices. <laughs> so what we're gonna do with what we're gonna do with lawyer, we're gonna put him in a studio and he's gonna do a lot of the children's stuff. Uh that's great. You know, with the Hebrew prayers and all that for the children. And we're gonna do short book stories of of uh, uh, of like Christ and him meeting the disciples and Moses walking through the Red Sea and getting the commandments. Just small little book stories for children. So right. that's because they need to know the truth, and I don't want them to learn how I learn, even though okay. and guess what? that's all my parents do. What, what I wanted to put out there, because I know the sister's listening also, just like we have flashcards for Abba, God, and the Hebrew, we also mm-hmm. have to have, you notice how they have animals on all their children, uh, cartoons and animals for, for children, books and all that? We also yes. have to have, with the characters, clean and unclean food cards. Flash cards Definitely. for unclean animals and clean animals, and so right. when you flash when when you flash one card, and the child if it's a pig, the child will say bad, bad. <laughs> okay, what is this yeah. pig? What is it bad? <laughs> what makes it bad? Right. Unclean. Unclean. So, <laughs> unclean. So, so we exactly. So if you have that, we train them at an early age. They'll already know what's bad and unclean strictly from looking at those cards. So right. So, sister, we're already there. Oh, she's on there. She says, "Thank God." I got you, Elder. She, sister, those cards are excellent, and she put them together. She put little trinkets with it and all that. It's real nice the way you put these cards together. And I'm going to tell you, if you have a child, you must go and get these. Hebrew flashcards from their sister. Mm-hmm. The way they package, the way they look, and they, they wipe off so they'll stay clean. So, in, not only so that, I'll have to do. Also, also, we need bigger things. Like the same way she did that, we can do placemats where people eat on right. with information and knowledge on it. You understand? Also, the right. same like the Hebrew prayers that we can hang up, we can say before we go out and come in. Mm-hmm. These are all right. the things that we have to work on so that we can keep this in our lives. Yeah. Because the law, remember, the law used to the law used to be 
on our door every day. Mm -hmm. It was a reminder exactly. going out, coming out, going in and coming out. We had a reminder, mm -hmm. so we don't have no reminders to keep us grounded. Mm -hmm. So all right. this, it, this got to happen yesterday. Mm -hmm. So sister, I'm yeah. with you. It, 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 Can I make one more comment? Hurry up because you got about. Okay, okay, okay. I, I own a dry cleaners and I have a lot of African customers. Actually, my husband is part African and Hebrew. But um, I have customers from Senegal, my sister-in-laws are from Ghana, and yeah. two cousins from Kenya. And I said, the Ebola thing, is that the okie doke? I said, because I want to hear what the news is over there. And my yeah. cousin from Kenya, she was just like, I said, what do your parents and your friends say over there? They say, there is no epidemic, we're not stressing, but there's a lot of American presence over there. Yeah, see that? Mm -hmm. that so I'm like, we, we can't fall for the okie doke. Yeah, so so in Africa, they know it's a sham. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, but so you know, Africa, the Western world, they push, you see who is in charge of the media. Yeah. So if you really want to know the news, you're probably going to have to get a newspaper or some uh, some internet hookup to African nations to find out what is really going on. Because well, they're well, like well, you Americans. Well, well, here's the deal. So that we'll 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 keep everybody up to date because I spoke to Shapat, which is formerly Brother Mark, about this. We're going to have an up to date news article on the Gathering of Christ site soon, and I'm going to have to write weekly or bi weekly articles just to. Keep people up on what's going on real time in the news. So we're going to add like that. Can't drink the Kool Aid. Hey, all, all of this is coming. So, sister, mm -hmm. we're there. Mm -hmm. And, and, and Elder, if you don't mind adding as well. All right. Well, bless you, sister. Well, sister. Shalom, sister. Thank you. While, while we're on the topic, um, I just saw someone asked a comment about an app, GOCC app. Yeah. Well, we have our app for the Raw Truth Radio Show that we do here in the UK. Yeah, and um, we we will be putting some information on it, like like you said, a blog with um, I know um, Brother Elder Romar um, have a lot of information. Sometimes he puts out during the week. Yeah, we're gonna have him on it. Um, hopefully, we can get some blogs from you as well. Yeah, coming in as well, updating us what's going on. All right, and then tomorrow, actually, if you tune into Peace FM tomorrow, we will be launching the app the app tomorrow, making the the the, the public know. That they can go on down. It's free down. Well, well I'll tell you this. Go on. Even though I like the, I, I, even though I, I like the Raw Truth uh, uh, app, it's mm -hmm. all good. But what I'm saying is, I would rather it be a GOCC app because I'm going to tell you, more people will know it's associated with us. Right. The name itself won't allow everyone to know out there because they don't know what the Raw Truth is. Right. But they know what the Gathering of Christ Church is. So if we want to make that advantageous where it gets out and does what it needs to do, mm -hmm. we need to tie it to what the church is so that it'll get the response it needs. Because automatically right now, because for some reason, they have stopped trying to censor us because they see we're not going anywhere. So within one year, don't forget, every time we got up to 2,000 subscribers, they would just delete the channel, delete the channel. Mm -hmm. You've all witnessed that. But since they haven't did that, Mm -hmm. Within a year, we have to 10,000 subscribers within a year now mm -hmm. on, on the main site. Right. So this is 10,000 people that we have access to. I know automatically if they know that app is out there, yep. boom, yep. they'll go download yep. it immediately yep. because they'd right. rather have information real time and right. what we upload it, what we have for the people, uh, what we have for them that sometimes can't be put on YouTube based on their guidelines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So these are things we can discuss offline. Okay, okay. no problem. All right. And All right. Um, just go straight to the next right. caller. Yeah. We have to take two more calls, and then we have to wish you all Godspeed. What a great show. You know what I mean? What a great show tonight. It's been in the spirit, I guess, because we all are sharing together. So mm -hmm. makes it easier for all of us. All right. We're not heard from any other brothers then. So let me just bring two brothers in here. Okay. Yeah. Before, but we have um, Elder Gabar over in New York. Yeah, let's get Elder Gabar. Hey, Shalom. Hello. Guys. How are we doing? How are we doing, Elders? How are we doing? How are we doing? Enjoy doing the show. Well. It's a blessing. Shalom, hey, Ella. How are you? Yeah, he's enjoying the show, you know, and it was funny because I had a conversation with a with a sister of the church that was, you know, came into the church and it recently um, found out who she is and, and, and find out that she'd been lied to. 
And, uh, you know, she called me, I think this was yesterday or the day before yesterday. She said, you know, Elder, you know, I'm having, uh, I want to get your counseling on something. And she said, you know, that I've been coming to the truth and I've been waking up. And then uh, I believe she was going to school. I forget what trade she's going for. Uh, and she said, you know, I don't want to do nothing. I don't, all I want to do is read the scriptures. It, 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 I just, you know, I felt like I've been asleep for like all my life. And then I don't longer have any joy in, in, in going to school and, and, and getting educated because it's, it's just, it's just become so, all I want to learn is learn more, learn more. I'm like, I'm sitting up at three o'clock in the morning. I know I got homework to do, but I listen to your videos and other records and, that's what I want to do. it. So, you know, I, I sat down and said, well, you know, that's, that's the Holy Spirit. There's, it's working with you in your belly and it's rising. And then, and then you're, 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 you're right now been waking up. But what you got to do now is whatever it is you're doing, and I think she was taking, I think she's going to school to be, uh, as I remember, if I, if I, my memory serves me right, uh, to be one of those uh, court recorders. You know, those people that record in the court system and they, they kind of keep the, uh, they, they keep, uh, they record they, what is said uh, in the court. Well, the telestrator, right? right? Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Uh, yeah. so, well, sister, you know, we, we, we may going to need that one day in, in, in the nation. So, go, you know, make sure that, that understand that everything has a purpose. And you may not see why you are doing that now or what use you're going to have it for the kingdom. But it's, you're going to, you know, it's going to be utilized one day. So, you know, she understood and things of that nature. So, so, but going back to you, were saying, Elder, a, yeah, absolutely. But now we have to start talking, talking about nation building. Nation building. Yeah. And, um, and, and if you do, if, if you are going to school, you are going or, or looking to get a trade and things of that nature, there's a brother over here, Brother uh, Ganan, uh, Brother Virgil. You know, Judah, Judah's back over here in, in my congregation. He, he's taking a course for solar power. Uh, uh, technology. That's what he's doing now. So that's something we clearly going to be using. So if you if you listen to the elders and, and, and to this broadcast, if you learn a skill, if you're not doing it. If you could go take some you know some night classes two nights a year to learn, I mean two nights a night uh, a week to learn a skill. It would be a farming or uh, electrician, plumbing. We're going to need plumbers. We're going to need electrician. We're going to need all that. So so definitely. Uh, uh, take that energy that you have for the scriptures and, and the truth, and apply it to your work, apply it to your business, apply it to your to your schooling. To say, you know what, the most I got me here in this class because ultimately, the body's going to need this skill. So, so, so I just want to drop that as well. Great points, great points, brother. And bless you. And it's well yeah. taken. We, we're hearing it over here too, so it's time. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely time. It's definitely time. Matter of fact, I wanted to give the, all the brothers and sisters an update in regards of, you know, they've been talking about, you know, the debate and things of that nature. Uh, last, last night, we had a rebuttal to uh, Brother Shaka Atmos on his video. And uh, we had some brothers like uh, uh, Imam Bashir and also Brother Sanetta come to the, to the, to the, 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 the church and they recorded. And they, at the end of the day, you know, at the end of the well, you know what? Let me let the video speak for itself. You're going to see a lot of these brothers are are are, are, are rethinking this this um, Egypt charger thing. You know, uh, I'm actually reading, looking at the, the Kodak game over uh, the, and reading uh, Shaka Atmo's book right now. And well, there's a lot of typos. I'm just, I'm just going to leave it as that. You know, there's certain scriptures that don't exist <laughs> in the Bible, but they exist in this book. But that's a different story. But uh, you know, uh, but it, it was it was a good it was a good re rebuttal. Um, my understanding, he 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 stepped down from the from 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 the debate. He doesn't want to do it anymore. But you know, that's that's you know. But but we were the the door was always open. So uh, well, I, I but, tell you what, I tell you what, I and there there was mixed emotions on the whole thing, especially how they presented it and put it out there. Yeah, as far as that and. That's why I called you the other day and told her I want to speak to you. But what I did was I said, you know what, I'm let the spirit work because there was mixed emotions on it. Because what I didn't want was I didn't want to be uh, to minimize the truth and be pulled down into some carnality mm. and foolishness that they were dealing with. But yeah. on the on on the other hand, though, to some degree, you you let it play out, and obviously it did because now one thing about and that, that's what I, that's what I love about the Bible. Is once it, once it, once it's in print, it can't be recanted. 
Yeah. So because so because he put his foolishness in black and white, mm -hmm. we can just do a show on all the points that he has, and it would be just as well as, as if he was there because it's his writing. Mm -hmm. There's no need to debate him if we got everything he believes in his book that he's published. So mm -hmm. whether or not someone will get his book will be predicated on this on our show looking into some of the things Egyptologists believe firsthand. So we need yeah. to do one show, because guess what, brother? I have, with the history and the timeline the Most High has given us on Egypt, it's going to topple all history of Egyptology and the world history as we know it. And mm -hmm. it's going to bring people back to the understanding that, that, that we had the truth the whole time. Absolutely. And uh, so... And, and what, you know, also I want to, and, and I think the Most High did that, we we were involved with this thing because yes. now you know I I I'm actually reading the pyramid text mm -hmm. and it is it is full of fallen angel writings. Absolutely. There's one Stella. There's one papyrus or one. Uh, uh, it's, 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 um, uh, I can't remember which one was it. Uh, I think it was four twelve. Yeah, four twelve. Pyramid text four twelve. Read that when you guys have a chance. Oh, it's talking me, about. It's talking about oh, oh, the oh, great. Oh, oh, boy, let me make sure I put this down. Excuse me here. It's pyramid text. Um, four twelve. Hold on. Yeah. Look at all these notes. I still got to look at. Uh, <laughs> papyrus. Go ahead. Is uh, pyramid text. And his ordinance is like spells or, or sayings, 412. What, pyramid text, 412? Yeah, it, it, ordinance, uh, U-T-T-E-R-N-A-N-C-E-S. Okay, and this is what i got to ask you real quick. Uh-huh. Real quick, I have to ask. One moment. Before you give that point. Why don't we just make a bullet point of about 12 different points mm -hmm. and just not even deal with the debate and just invite someone on and ask them factual questions on what they believe? Mm -hmm. You understand? So that yeah. people can make a conclusion that this is really a satanic religion y'all dealing with. Mm -hmm. This don't have nothing yeah. to do, this have nothing to do with not you believe in the Bible. This have everything mm -hmm. to do you dealing with a religion here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so, so they so busy trying to get in a debate of the Bible, the switch in date is we're going to have you focus on what's not right without telling people that we're really dealing with witchcraft. Exactly. So, so why don't we bring them on and say, yeah, we read this in the papyrus about, about this fallen angel. Give, give me a, give me, give me, a, give me, a, give me your opinion on that. Mm -hmm. Who's this, who's this okay. fallen angel here? Or... Okay, Osiris, what, what, this thing about the underworld and doing these rituals for mummy, mummies so that they can enter the, uh, the underworld. Where's that yeah. underworld? And what's, that, what's that about? Exactly. See, and therefore, let, let, let's not even deal with the Bible discussion. If you're an mm -hmm. expert on Egyptology, give me some understanding of these rituals that they're talking about opening the gates of hell. Exactly. And then after exactly. you talk, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you know what hell is. But <laughs> let's, let's, let's make an agreement that you have a... Under your religion, you have a different interpretation of hell because y'all just want to go there. <laughs> mm -hmm. But we both know there's something existing there because the, Egypt, the, the Egyptians have prepared their dead for the underworld to, so that they can lay with their fathers, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so let's, do, let's get off this debate back and forth on what's right or wrong because mm -hmm. you notice we had a brother come on and not once did he go into what they really believe. We yeah. need them to go into what they believe, and that's going to be enough information to why people shouldn't follow them. Mm -hmm. We're not even going to need the Bible. Exactly. We need them to admit, what's that thing sticking out of the side of your head, brother? Right. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Yeah, and, and, and let, who's the, in Auditance uh, 412, who is, what it says to say, the great one is fallen. On his side, who is the great one that has fallen on his side? Yeah, you know, let's let's let's, <laughs> come on. You know, <laughs> who is this guy? Who is falling? And it, it towards the end, it says, 
towards the end of the uh, the spell, it says, "Heaven would not be empty of thee forever." Heaven will not be empty of thee forever. So we oh, all know that. Lu- yeah, exactly. So we all know Satan was fall. He's the great one that fell. Yeah. And then at see, the but, end, see, it see, says. <laughs> see, but, see, but listen. See, here's the word play, though. If we use biblical names for anything, they'll switch the conversation to that. So exactly. I wouldn't even talk about Lucifer or Satan or nothing. I'm just going to ask, according to the Egyptians, who's that? Yeah. <laughs> Who, who's that way that, that, that that's going to go back to heaven? <laughs> see, you know, because, see, because what they do is they are master diverters mm-hmm. when, when when you bring something out of the Bible. Mm-hmm. So I've mm-hmm. learned. I, I, listen, I'm not even going to talk about the Bible. Who's that? Who 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 that that's going back to heaven right there? Where was he? And how did he get to earth? Who is he? Yeah. yeah. Why did he fall? What, why are you trying to get back there? This is this yeah. happen. <laughs> so, so right. who, who, and who, kick, and who kicked him out? Who kicked him out? And, and then if they try to avoid the answer, right, it leaves the door wide open for us. Excuse me, since you don't want to talk about something, we're gonna put you on mute real quick. Right. Let's go to the Book of Isaiah <laughs> <laughs> and let's talk about that Lucifer that fell from heaven. Right. You understand? So that's how we got to deal with these guys. We can't debate them and because they they so all over the place that no one point will ever get resolved. Exactly. We do it this way. I'll talk to you offline. Don't worry about it. But I'm ready Okay. Now. We'll, okay. So you, know okay. What, you know what? Now, every other so month, I'm going to be coming back to England so that we can get this together over here. Right. And, and, and listen to what I'm saying here, brother. It's open for him to have a trip, and we can get every black pan-African in England to support him. And we Mm -hmm. can have an open discussion, not on debating anything. You bring what you bring, and we bring what we bring. And at the end, let the people decide what's right. Exactly. Because what you're going to tell me is the beginning and origin of your religion, how it applied to us today, how it benefits for us today, and what is the prophecies going forward according to your religion. That's all we need to know. Mm -hmm. And if you have a direction for us, then that's beyond what we're bringing forth, then guess what? you got a house full of Egyptologists that's going to follow you back to the United States, you understand, and operate Mm -hmm. with you going forward. And also... yeah, right. and then uh, and also uh, Iman Bashir, he's willing to come on the radio show, and he wants to debate two points. The first point, that Christ really died on the cross, and is the Comforter mentioned in the Bible in Luke, you know, fourteen, fifteen, and fourteen and sixteen, is is it, is it talking about a future prophecy or pre, a future prophet, and is that prophet is Muhammad? So uh, he, well, was, that's he, that's he's willing to come to the show for, to to debate that. Okay, I'll talk that's to you about that later. If he, if he don't want to get to the nitty gritty, if he want to talk some stuff he don't understand, then no, he can't be on the show. <laughs> but if he want to bring what the truth is, instead of these, he's, he's picking and choosing what he want to talk about. Right. Then no, because it's 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 it's, it's unfruitful. I'd rather talk about vaccines for six hours. Right. <laughs> Right, so that was out there. That was out there. All right, but okay. as a, as a stand now, Shaka stepped down. He doesn't want to do it. So that's what he <laughs> yeah, I bet he did. All right, brother, great job, great work. And I, you know, I'm, I'm get, I was getting mixed bags with the whole thing. But I say, you know, let the spirit play it out. You right. don't know what the Most High is doing, right? I, I, yeah, I was about, I'm gonna put you back in the queue and we'll speak. We'll speak all often, right. All right. Bless all you. Right, we'll talk. I call you. Okay. I'll call you when I get back. Okay, we'll do. All right. Yeah, but Hello. We got one more call. Right, let's go one last call for the night, and it's been a bless show, Ella Rakai. You my brother. All right, <laughs> now, come on. Blessings, oh, come on blessings now. man. I mean, it's, you know, you can't even put it to words having all the brothers and sisters in here. Yeah, it's a blessing. I'm doing a family. I'm doing a, you know, doing a, a broadcast, which has been a while since we've actually done it like this. Yeah. You know, and it's just good. This will be the first time it was done like this, what? Well, 
Not the first time you've done a radio show where we actually with side by side. No, I'm talking about like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're blocked off. I kind of like that. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? We probably could, we should do it. Hey, come come in tomorrow, <laughs> Alex. Hey, come in tomorrow. <laughs> because it, 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 people are going to be texting until they get blisters based on this show tomorrow. <laughs> 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 we going what, What's the show tomorrow we're going to be talking about? I said we're going to talk about... Uh, tomorrow's show is... Um, we, did, we did the origins of the Bible last yeah. year. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go through all the discrepancies that people have with the Bible and just kick everything out the water with any, anything that they would come with and say, Oh well this is a contradiction and that and also then open up the door for people who had a problem for them to come in and then we say just leave it like exactly. that. Exactly. That that means if you had a problem with anything we've taught in the past and may not agree on everything, then that's not a reason for you to Speak with us so that we can conversate on what common ground we can operate on going forward. Because regardless of what you believe or I believe, we're all of us are between the crosshairs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about what we can't. Is there anything in the Bible you do believe mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that you agree with? Mm -hmm. yeah. And then let's start there then. I'm not, I'm not, right? Another thing I'll that. We're coming into a time right now where we will be dependent on each other. Yes. Only and only each other, and we have to come together and work with, work together, even if it's just for self preservation and and to get by. You understand me? We have to we have to start doing that. And it's like you know, I know the, I know I know with the Egyptology out there and all that, it's a big debate. But these brothers out there don't realize that the, the, the time and hours gone. For debating or trying to prove something, you understand me? Yo, we are being annihilated. You understand? And the Africa, I mean, the black unconscious, I mean, conscious movement has not done, you know, anything in terms of highlighting that fact to say, well, yo, listen, what are we gonna do now? You understand? Instead, you see these brothers going around and provoking Hebrews or you know, Israelites who are actually. Bringing the people them to the true understanding of what they are, and that's what I think it is. I think it's provocation. I think yeah. the, the devil and his minions are at work. Yeah, you understand me to to create to create another divide. I mean, at the end of the day, Egyptology, Egyptology, uh, you being a Muslim, me understanding I'm a, I'm a I'm a Hebrew, right? At the end of the day, we are being targeted. We are. They are looking to kill us. You understand me? Regardless of what we believe. So, until we can see that point that, listen, we have to come together on and, and, and things that we agree on rather than try to tear down each other on, 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 on these points. You yeah. understand the worst again when you point that the elder just said before that you, you're actually making up scriptures that don't exist. You know, you know, I mean, okay, this is an argument. Elder, don't, not going off too, too far. Bring the next call in a sec, but this is an argument that, that, that everybody goes to. The white man wrote the Bible, right? Now, if the white man wrote the Bible, right, the white men that wrote them scriptures were some righteous brothers. You understand me? What's wrong, what's wrong with following the laws? What, what, what's wrong with keeping the commandments? What's wrong with it? What's it so evil about it? And, it, and, and if it was extrapolated from something that you believe in, then why don't you just believe it then? If it came already from from what you call your original source, you understand me? What's okay? So what's wrong with it then? If 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 what I believe in the Bible is plagiarized from your original text, what is wrong with it then? That means if you think that there's something wrong with what I'm reading, there's something wrong with with the original text it came from. Yeah, you know, and 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 you know these these are these are the things that that we find. And Elder Gabar put a challenge on that. You know, if, if we all, if we did one year of keeping the most high's law, statutes, and commandments, we would see a difference in our lifestyle, in our health, in our well-being, in our spirit. We would be much in a much better place. You understand me? And and think about what we're talking about tonight: the the, the, the coming together, the economics, the finances. If 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 Hebrew Israelites, right? Right through Britain stops spending the money on the Sabbath. This country goes bankrupt. Tesco's, Asda, and all of them other other companies right now have to shut down if if the children of Israel keep in the Sabbath. Because that's who that's who support these businesses. If we pull out of it, if we stop, if we say your oh, Friday Friday sundown, 
the Saturday sun now, we will not spend any money in these establishments. This place goes bankrupt. You understand me? This 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 is survive this is surviving on your blood, sweat and tears. This is you we are the ones who, who, who have always kept the system up. That's why in every in every in every nation you know, we serve captivity. You understand me? We are needed. You understand? But anyway, let's move to the next caller, man. Elder, been a blessed show. Oh yeah. Yeah. All praise be to the most. I ain't over yet. <laughs> We're gonna continue this tomorrow and I can tell you you're going to probably have a whole line. People are going to think that we got a caravan to be picked up from. I bet you every cab, every every cab with an Arab is going to be lined up around Peace FM Lamar. <laughs> they, they was knocking on the door at 4 in the morning. I'm like, yo, who that knocking on the door, Gaja? Man, what's going on there? He was like, let me in, let me in. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, come on in, brother. I'll talk to you. You you you're not do you're not saying right when it comes to Muhammad. <laughs> well, I tell you what, Ella, we had a, we had a, we had a, we had an imam. We're invited on Mark McKenzie's show. Yeah, come on there. About a week, about no, like a couple months ago. Yeah, and um, we had a, the imam came onto the thing, and the imam was like, yeah, yeah, I can, you know, I I I can debate this, I can, you know, Bible, and the third. So we we asked him yeah. two questions. We asked him the first the the, the first question was to explain. What was written in Sahih Muslim 525, right? And, I, and, yeah. and just explain what's going on there, all right? I'm not gonna speak it right now. It's a bit graphic. I know we have yeah. children, yeah. children in, in in the room, so I'm not, I'm not gonna go into that. And the next question we asked him was, listen, where in the Quran does it show? Does it tells you that Abraham went to sacrifice Ishmael? As a matter of fact, before we even asked the question, we said, okay, listen, who did who did According to what you believe in, who did Abraham offer for sacrifice? And Muslim went, um, the Imam went, Ishmael. It was like, boom, it never, it, with a second it came out. Ishmael, so I'm like, alright, then cool. Show me in the Quran where it says that. Right? And that was the second question. And it took us what? It took us a last 25 minutes of the show. Okay, before the last 25 minutes, what was the answer to that? He was trying to find it in the Quran. And for those of you who don't know, it does not it's not written anywhere in the Quran that Abraham went to sacrifice his life. <laughs> Alright? So for the mere fact that, that the Imam started to look in the Quran to say he's going to find it, right? We had a problem right there. It took him twenty it took him the last twenty five minutes of the show to actually start going into it and then at any goes, Okay, don't worry, it's here. I, I, I can show it to you. I said, brother, just show it to me now. You're supposed to be the imam and the authority. Where is it? And we said to him, listen, come back when you have the answer for the next show. And he had a, we, we have a, we have a four, we have a four hour segment on Peace FM, right? And we said, yo, come on Thursday to the four hour segment. And the guy who he was with in the background going, throwing hand gestures like, no, no, no. <laughs> he goes, yo, listen, he goes, he goes, I'm coming. I was like, all right, cool. We're still waiting. You understand? It's been what? It's been about three, four months now since that, since that show. He's out of here. He coming back. Well, yeah, I mean, and this is the thing. This is the thing. We had, we had the Quran in front of us. Yo, yo, show us in the Quran where it says, Abraham went to sacrifice Ishmael. And if you do that, I'll become a Muslim today. I'll forget everything I'm doing. And, I, and I'm in Islam now. Are you with me? And yo, we're not seeing him. So... <laughs> okay. You get me? So this, yeah. people come, you know, the thing is that we are awake and we know who we are. And, we, and we're not just awake and saying we're Israel, we're studying. Yeah. You're with me? We're reading. You understand me? We're reading things that 10, 15 years ago would have never read. 20 years ago would have never read. And we're yeah. doing it now. We're coming. We're waking up. So, you know, listen, bring it. You understand yeah. me? But on, but on a positive note, go um, we had a Muslim on the show, Pakistani man, yeah, who has converted to Christianity seven years ago. Yeah, and how I met him was in town. Um, I was speaking to some Jehovah's Witnesses yeah. who were from Iran who came over here to preach the Bible in Arabic and all that. And and he overheard me having a conversation with them, yeah. and that's how I found out he was he had converted to Christianity. And yeah. he's been on the show, and he came out with some deep information. Yeah. Deep information, how the Quran was compiled on camel bone and leaf, was it, Dajjah, just going into all the hadith. 
Yeah. 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 Yeah, so he knows he's, 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 he's coming out with things I've listen, never yeah. heard. Listen, he, 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 he brought some listen. history, right? And told us that the, the, the first Quran that they wrote, right, there was about four men who could have read it. And then four men, before them four men could have translated it, it got et by go. You with me? That's the old. And, and, <laughs> you get me? It was written on leaf. You know, listen. You said, you know, listen, you said when, the, when Muhammad died, right, they were so caught up in Muhammad's funeral or his, his death, his, his old death business, that, that, that goat came and <laughs> named what was, what was written down, right? And then, <laughs> listen, you know, Ella, I'm going to see if we can squeeze that brother on, on, on hey, the yeah, That's not squeeze him in. Yeah, we see, man. Just, just yeah. you are talking, yeah, man. Yeah, we'll squeeze him in tomorrow. Uh, you with me? I'll let him uh, come through okay. some, that, some of the information. Let's get this one call because <laughs> we, we get delayed and I got about to do it. All right, let's go to the last call. All right, who we got? Brother Aaron, with a comment. Brother Aharon, Aaron, how you doing? Talk to me. Hello? Hello? Hello, Shalom, brother. How y'all doing? Shalom. We're doing uh, well. I was I was calling in uh, about the home births, um, and um, I, me, me and my wife we we we've had uh, four home births at home. Uh, all of our children, uh, they haven't had any vaccines. They're strong, um, and 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 really, it, it brings your family close together. Um, uh, men, really, really for the men, it's like it's like there's nothing more greater than seeing the power of the most high, like just use your wife and perform life right in front of you. And and you know, it's it's truly a blessing to see that. And uh um we had a set of twins um uh, maybe two and a half months ago. And and uh, uh the doctors we, we went to you know, just to do like ultrasounds to check on them, because um, we never had identical twins, so uh, the doctors was like, oh, well, well uh, one of your sons, uh, he's breached. Uh, we're going to, you know, we're going to have to perform, you know, and, and make sure everything's all right. And we're like, um, um, we're like, nah, you know, we, we're okay. We, we got a midwife, you know, we're going to make sure everything's all right. And, you know, we just kept praying and, and asking, asking the most high to, to work with us. And, and, and he really, he really stepped in. I called my mother-in-law. She came by just to, you know, to, to, to stand by and, and help out whenever I needed her. And and it's nothing like just seeing your children come into the world. It, it, it really it really it increases your faith and, and, and you really, you know, focus in. And uh, I just wanted to let everybody know that, you know, you know, if, if you if you if you keep keep pushing and, and keep believing and keep searching, he, he, he will find you. Um, and and uh, my wife, she. She, for for you know for the women out there who you know who who want to do home birth and stuff like that, she got a lot of information that she can give you. Uh, standing up is it, it is the it is the key. It, it truly is the key. You you she she you don't be on labor long. It's the key. You can you can really um um watch and see how how the Lord works. Um and 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 I was and and I was thinking um. Um, I'm over here in Connecticut, and and we we really we really don't have like a, a elder around. I want to know if there's anyone around to where we can you know actually get get around because we want to be around a lot of like-minded people. And right now, you know, it's just you know me and my wife, and uh, she homeschooled um, all seven of our children, and she got a lot of information on that too. It's just that you know we're trying to you know push ourselves to to, to pretty much get into an area to where we can be around, you know, like minded people, as I said. And um uh, um and pretty much that's that's just pretty much it. I just I just I just wanted to, you know, let let everybody know that it 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 it, it, it is a blessing and, and 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 don't the the vaccines, the vaccines, um we our three older children, they were sick a lot, they had a lot of life threatening issues, but when we stopped giving them vaccines they got stronger um, and, and, and we started homeschooling them and they got better. And, you know, like our, our last four, my, uh, my, uh, baby, my oldest son that we had at home, he's, they say he's three, but they say he's the size of a, of, of a five-year-old. He's like 97% past his age. Like he's, he's way stronger. He's smarter. Um, they're more attentive. 
Um, and, you know, no one's going to going to teach a child better than you. So, you know, just like I say, it, it really brings your family close together. Um, I, you know, I sacrifice and I'm, I'm the only one working and I'm, you know, uh, and my wife is, you know, homeschooling. She's, she's working at home while I'm working out, out in, in the world. And I'm, I just want to, you know, like I said, get around uh, more people, more brothers and, and, and being able to, to, to actually, you know, stand away from the outside of the world and be able to be around like-minded people so we can continue to move forward and, into the most high. So okay. I just, I just wanted to, I just wanted to No, go ahead. What you say? No, go ahead. Well I just like I said, I just I just pretty much that's that's pretty much all I had to say. I just I just want everybody to know that, you know, like again, you know, it, it, it is possible for you to have your children at home. You just gotta understand and you gotta pray about it and, and, and and, and look at certain things and pay attention to what you got in front of you and, and, and everything, just have that faith. It's, he'll see you through. He'll see you through. It's a, it's a beautiful experience. And, you know, I have my family, they, they're like, uh, you know, y'all, y'all, y'all seven, you know, how, how, how many more y'all going? Because nowadays they, they think it's, it's bad when you have children. You know, they, they think it's like, oh, you just too much responsibility. But when you look at it, it's like when, when you actually witness and see, for yourself, it, 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 it's, it's like wow. I, it's, it's more than, than 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 money. It's more than gold. It's, it's 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 just it's a gift. It's gift from the Most High. It's something the money can never buy. And 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 you know, and and, and people got to really look at you know, in the future, who's going to be taking care of us, and it's our children. So you know, we gotta we gotta keep pushing to the right track. We gotta continue to teach them the right way. And I'm just I'm just. Glad that to, to to be able to to hear your show and 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 pretty much uh, try to you know teach my children you know and 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 learn for myself and uh, and 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 as of today you know I, I listened to uh, one of, one of your uh, one of your sermons uh, it was uh, uh, I guess the uh, in, in, in prophecy I was listening to it at work because I had I, I was been I was able to you know listen to my um my phone so i put my headphones on and i listened to it and after i listened to to what we what you was talking about for about uh, for about an hour and 30 minutes as soon as i got off the phone and, and hung it up my my boss pulled up on me he was mad at me because he's saying everybody else was complaining about me and i knew it was nothing but the devil because i'm the only brother that works at my job and see uh uh and and and, and and what got me was this right here. They got mad at me because I went to the restroom, and and I wasn't in the and I wasn't in the building working on their houses. And, and you know, I'm thinking to myself like, that's so small to me. But it's letting me know that you know this is not where I belong. And I want to be able to work around people that I can, you know, I can actually, you know, we can work together. You know, instead of being out here and I'm helping this person, helping this man, and, you know. Uh, uh, make make him make his wealth, and, and and I'm still struggling, you know, trying to make my ends meet. But I'm out here helping this man make millions, and he looks down upon me because I I took the time to myself to to use the restroom. So it's like you know, it's 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 getting worse when you when you have you know people with with power. They look at you and they 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 downsize you and they make you look like you know you can't do simple things like go to the restroom or you know you can't you can't you know take a break or anything. So you know, like I said, you're right when you say we need to get together and we need to start working together for ourselves instead of trying to help everybody else out because no one else is going to care for you, no one else is going to look out for you but your own. So you know that's that 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 really was good just to hear that and. And I'm really trying to, like I said, get around some like-minded people. So, you know, if you if you got any information or anything, I can I can, you know, I can get I, or talk to somebody so we can continue to put my kids around because, you know, we watch them closely. We don't we don't, you know, they're not going to school, and it's it's like you know I want to continue to to put them around the children who think the, and, and feel the same, so they won't, won't have to be suggest um, subjects to the sin in this world. You know, I just want to be able to get everybody together and continue to move forward. 
So that's pretty much all I had to say. I'm just, I'm just, you know, uh, I just want everybody to know that you, you, with, with the Most High and the faith, you can have your children at home, and you do not need that doctor in in in, the, in, in your face like that, you know, because it was you and your wife when y'all when y'all conceived, and it can be you and your wife when y'all when, when the Most High comes to bring forth life. So just to let everybody know that you know it. It is truly is a blessing. Your children are truly a blessing. Okay, well, shalom, brother. And there's some key things I wanted to tell you real quick before you go off. Okay. I know, I know it's tough being in an area where no one's around, but we can help you with that. Um, okay. You can get with Elder Gabar in the New York area, and we can connect you to the people we have in Connecticut. That's number one. Okay. Number two. Okay. Number two. Why don't you and your wife write an article or an essay or whatever the case is on your experience of you having okay. a children at home and what y'all went through and okay. how the most part went through, through your children. And take yeah. a picture with the family together and what we'll do is we'll put that as an article on the page mm -hmm. so that that can actually be a, 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 a beacon of hope to brothers and sisters to see a, a great family that's struggling but still is rich in the Most High and operating together in love like the Most High said an Israelite family should be. So, well, okay, man, and, 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 and one Israelite. more thing. I'm sorry to cut you off. One more thing is this right here. My, no, my, I'm, my, I'm saying, but we, my, we, almost out of, we almost out of time. That's why I'm, okay. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, okay. So, so what I want you to do is send that to me. Okay, you, okay. You can send it to the gathering as one at AOL dot com and tell and and title it the brother that spoke on the radio show from Connecticut. Gotcha. All right. Okay. And I want All right. I appreciate it. All right. So we have to put you in because uh, I have a lot of people here and I'm about to pray out. Okay. And get okay. tomorrow. Long day tomorrow. So. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. Bless you, brother. All right. Bless you. And and the next thing I wanted to say also is that. Uh, for those that was asking about the academy, you can get in the academy and join it by sending an email to gathering as one. That's the number one at AOL.com. And if you want to participate in the academy, we'll be more than happy to get you through. Uh, we, there's still a lot left. And if you miss the weeks, I think we in week seven coming, what I can do is I can make sure the prior weeks and videos and, and, and PDF studies be sent to you to, to your email so you can catch up and then you can come in starting this coming Sunday if you wish. All right, with that, I'm going to say shalom, brother. It's been a blessing. That's another, most, that's another. All right. One more announcement before we go. Yeah. This Sabbath, we are in Birmingham for the Sabbath gathering, all right? Yeah. And if you're in the UK and you want to be a part of this gathering on this Sabbath, email me at gocc144uk at gmail.com and we will send you the details, all right? That is this coming um, Saturday um, in Birmingham. Yeah. Um, all baptized members are expected to be there. We're going to have a, a discussion with baptized members only and also a segment of the class where we're going to have open open to everyone. Yeah. So um, please be there. We'll be starting at what time we're going to be starting at? 1 o'clock. We'll be there from 1 o'clock um, sharp. As if you email me, I'll send you the address. All right. And um, hope to see you there. All right. <clears throat> Blessings, everybody. Okay. That's it, man. And we hope that everybody that's in England can come to Birmingham. If you can't, we understand, but mm -hmm. it's going to be the last time that I'm going to be meeting with everyone before I fly out and have to fly back. So we want to just keep this thing going and have it be what the most I intended. All right? With that, I'm going to say shalom, stay strong, and kwam yeshawa. Let me give you all a round of applause. we got an audience. Time we had an audience within a radio program. I kind of like this, you know. <laughs> this is something that we have to continue with sometimes. And for the brothers and sisters that have joined us through Ustream, we thank you all. And uh, what, what's this uh, blog talk, right? Yes. And um, back for the, for, the, for the topics that we'll be discussing tonight, I thought I might close off the show tonight with this song here. You with me? <laughs> Check this out. Go ahead. All right. Everybody, call me out, Allah. I'll be safe to speak again.
שלום, לשיר. Flee back to the wilderness where Christ tell we fear run When him say flee from out of Jerusalem when they see Romans a come In our West Africa, they saw my forefathers them try cycle down Until Christopher Columbus the Edomite, him come take us down And them still a do the same genocide, looking at Ferguson We fee flee, a time fee we flee A time fee we flee From all the lands, from all the lands of the captivity Marcos, Mosiah say, repatriation Love still a set up shop for live up in a Babylon 70 AD with Titus and Vespasian We chase my forefathers and out of Jerusalem to the African land Christ tell us to run to Africa to the Atlas mountain Where my forefathers lived for a thousand years before they found them Brought us to the west to build up them streets in the Gagan fountain Them tell us we are Africans when them know Now that we are Israelite The most I say never rise us up Eat Babylon no like That's why them change the history Try to teach us so we don't see the light The most I may fight for the people them But the people not live right They may plan a genocide To kill off the most I messenger Them know that in the last day We are going to return back to Africa So Babylon said them scientists Go spread Ebola A time fee we flee A time fee we flee And time fee we flee Free from all the lands, from all the lands of the captivity If a slave born in a America No you're not American Slave born in a Jamaica No you're not Jamaican Them tell you that your nationality come from where you're born from But your nationality come from the land where your forefathers walk from Remember we were brought over here upon the caravan Atlantic slave trade by the Khazars and the Arabians No say them are Jews but them are the synagogue of Satan Don't have no blood lineage to David nor Solomon to Jacob nor Abraham So tell me where them come from Change your history now we are them and they are we A full time to the world now we are the royal family Nashral I ancient Israel they so be fibi And if me no make it in them is sure of me picking it Time fee we flee And time fee we flee And time fee we flee Free from all the lands, from all the lands of free captivity Time fee we flee And time fee we flee And time fee we flee Free from all the lands, from all the lands of free captivity Wake up yo And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies Then know that the desolation thereof is not And let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, For your redemption, your redemption draws, draws nigh.